Hello, my honey bunches, and welcome to the checkpoint level nine. We are live with today's special guest, Hash Rush, will be coming on in the next hour. How are you folks doing? I got a laptop set up to my right so I can actually read the chat. <laughs> we coming in loud and clear. There's Mr. Solo. Good to see you, bud. Jay Gomfer. Hey, hey, hey. How goes it? How goes it? We got a fabulous show planned for you guys today. We're going to wait a few more minutes to let some people get up in here. As my camera doesn't go ape. Yo, Mad Ed coming with that host. Thank you, sir. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. This time after you starting soon, so you notice it. Ah ha! I see what you did there. What do you guys think, man? Hash Rush, I've been playing it for a little while now, and I'm an RTS nut. So I've been super stoked about this checkpoint. It's uh, definitely going to be one of the good ones. We are going to be giving away some Rush coins later. So we're going to have a little marbles racing. But we're going to have one race at the end of this hour, and then we're going to have four at the end. And then we're going to be giving away a copy of Fall Guys as well. Haven't seen any gameplay yet? Well, you're definitely going to be seeing the gameplay. We're going to do the gameplay during the second hour. Juan Unity, thank you for the follow. I don't have my... My things popping up loud. Let's see. Ah. I'm going to crank this up just to her. There we go. Wonderful. Marble Racing is a way to, it's kind of like a numbers generator, but more interactive. So if you're watching on Twitch, I'm going to bring up a screen and you'll, you'll see prompts for it. Yo, Wolven, thank you for the host. Um, what will happen is, is that you'll type exclamation play and a marble with your name will pop up. If you're first, you win. Easy breezy. Copy of Fall Guys. Ooh, pick me, pick me. <laughs> you got to win. Got to be in it to win it, sir. So that'll be at the la uh, last marbles race of the day. And uh, who doesn't like Fall Guys right now? Eh? Hmm? If you're new to the stream, we do this every month. So be sure to smash that follow button so you can catch next, uh, next month's checkpoint, as well as Marble Madness Sunday, where we give out a free ZNZ for marble races. But I hope everybody's having a spectacular Saturday. I know down here in Texas, where I am at, we are, are extremely grateful to miss the nasty storm that hit uh, hit just a few days ago. Laura was a nasty mess, and my you know, thoughts and prayers out there to everybody in Louisiana that's having to recover right now. There is about a million people without electricity, and they're doing everything they can to get it back up. It was brutal. And it, it was only like a... <sighs> We were probably about 100 miles out from the eye. So, whew, dodged a bullet. Yes, we are going to be giving away a copy of Fall Guys because Hash Rush is free, which we'll be talking about here in just a bit. Same, same woman. But it's about 12.15, so we are going to kind of go ahead and kick this off. We are going to explore the Hash Rush website. So if you guys are wondering where you got to go, I will put a link down in the chat. This way you guys can go out there and get you a copy. Now, in order to receive your Rush coins, you have to have a username for me, okay? So go set you up an account and get ready, all right? Keep me up on the side screen. So we're gonna kinda dive through it now. All right. So first thing is, there it is. Play for free, download it, play it. 
get to know it. So latest news, uh, this is basically, they just did a release, um, a little update. I'll set up an account if I like the game, Dweeb. No, you do it because I told you to, Mad. Don't make me. Mad's one of our fellow little trolls that we've had around here for a long time. Don't make me come to the screen. I'll do it. Give you a little, just a little... <laughs> just play it, just play it. So join our community. They have a Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and Telegram. <laughs> This is the home. We'll go to about game. So we got a gameplay video. Let me go ahead and kill the music. We'll jump into that. Come on, give me, give me. Yeah, I was pretty much hooked when I first saw it, so... Galaxy points. High score. That's something that people like me love. I want to get that high score. Oh, no, Markiplier. This is not a time for you, sir. Get out of here. Meh. All right. Cue the music. So, this is a little bit of a gameplay video. So, the Crystal Storm has wreaked havoc upon many races in the Herm... Hermian, Hermi, Hem, Her, Hermi Galaxy, that's what I'm, Hermian Galaxy. <laughs> and it is down to the player to guide the races in their efforts to rebuild and survive. Fight and defend against Crystal Scourge as it works to corrupt every planet and living being that it encounters. Explore your planet, secure valuable resources, and build thriving settlements as you work to cleanse your planet and defeat the Crystal Scourge. I mean, that's a pretty good build up. I don't know, I don't know about you guys. So be sure to let me know what you guys are thinking so far. I mean, I think they did really very well with a unique race. Um, I was playing the game for a bit, and I, I mean, it felt like its own game. It didn't feel like uh, StarCraft. It didn't feel like it had the playing of RTS, but the characters and everything had that uniqueness. That's for sure. All right, the basics. Core features of Hash Rush are combat. The Crystal Scourge has mutated and corrupted the flora, and fauna of almost every planet in the Herme Hermian, Her Hermian <laughs> galaxy. The surviving races will need to quickly learn to defend themselves or fall to the Crystal Scourge's onslaught. Yo, Ahmed. Yeah, we just started up, bud. Yo, yo, Zinzo gang. What's up, Chris? How goes it? So, building and crafting... Uh, to defeat the Crystal Scourge, the player will need to build a well-defended and functioning base. Gather base resources, refine them in the, into their advanced form, and prepare yourself of waves of monsters. I've actually played a few different styles in this game. Like, I played old school stuff, so I did like a turret defense thing to where it like forced them to go in an area so they couldn't, you know, beat up my stuff. How can you join? Um, if you go to the link right here... You can go download you a copy of Hash Rush right now. Hey man, no worries. Take your time. Take your time. We're just going through the website and everything right now. We're seeing what Hash Rush has to offer. Um, you know, kind of getting the ins and outs before we bring on the crew. Uh, we're going to have the uh, co-founders, uh, Nathan and Chris, coming on with us here in about 40 minutes. So, be sure to have some questions ready. Uh, exploring. The player will have one week to explore their own planetoid and defeat the Crystal Scourge. Though at first, everything will look peaceful. Things will quickly become dangerous, but the longer you last, the better your resources you will find. And I can attest to this. I actually stayed alive for a long time. Um, I just built a defense and kept on taking on waves and waves and waves. And that's, uh, that's a pretty good way to bring up that uh, them points. Yo, Gomford, thank you for the sub. Thank you, sir. One of our fellow Zendonites. And a little thank you to Mr. Uh, Jay Gunfer. All right, leaderboard. 
truly competitive scene awaits you? Will you earn the crown of the Monster Slayer, or will you be the crystal mining overlord? A fun challenge awaits you in various high score categories. I like high score stuff. I love high score stuff. I had fun with the tower defense method also. I kept getting crashes that stopped the wave spawns though, so I couldn't keep it going. This, it's a plague that happens in early development of video games. And, you know, they have an extremely polished beta as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, as gamers that are on board helping these guys, it's on it's our duty to report bugs, get it to them. And from what I've seen, the Hash Rush team has been more than responsive when issues come up. So, it's pretty cool. Alright, gotta switch to that PC. Alright, so Galaxy Points and the Leaderboard. All major actions taken by the player will generate special points known as Galaxy Points. The player's position in the Hash Rush High Score table will be primarily based on how many Galaxy Points they have accumulated. So, there's a farming aspect. In this farm, you actually have to work for it because the monsters get stronger. I can attest. Yes. Yeah, uh... Was it? Is that does that say Punity? I can't tell if that's an F or one Unity. D Durr. Sorry, <laughs> I can't read. Yeah, one Unity. I'm I'm with you on that, but I have it. I just recently uh, discovered them, probably about a little bit over a month ago, and was just completely hooked. <laughs> so, all right, the the leaderboard is reset every week, and players will win exciting prizes based on their overall position. Very cool. Crafting. As well as regular resources used in day-to-day -day running of your base, players will be able to craft special items. Craftable items include special tombs that grant, the, uh, grant you galaxy points, equipment for your heroes, and even skins to customize your game. Who doesn't like skins? You know what I mean? Strategic combat system. Okay, the Raken Archer. I, I, have, I have one thing to say about the Raken Archer. I was a big fan of Trailer Park Boys. And one of the things that they call raccoons is rakins. And the fact that I saw that in the game, I died laughing when I first saw it. I thought it was so cool. Cool. No worries, man. You, like I said, you, you're right on time. Every unit in Hash Rush comes with a specific type of damage, along with a set of resistances towards the damage types. So there's pros and cons using against, you know, certain enemies. Uh, players will need to pay attention to the type of enemy monster that will engage in combat, as every unit is its own res oh ugh. in combat as every unit it's it, its own resistances for example the powerful uh ursara has a lot of muscles and fur that protects them from blunt damage high resistance and slashing damage medium uh, medium resistance uh but are vulnerable to piercing damage so that's cool you know it depends on what sh yeah yeah i'm a little bit of a fanboy i can't i can't help that um, it depends on what units you put against each other. So obviously if you've got a hulking dude in front and you've got a bunch of ranged behind you, that tank can take a lot of the damage while, you know, you back, back there kind of picking off the units. There's also healer units, which, uh, come in handy. <laughs> see, Gomfer knows. So it looks like you got a, let's see, Swordsman, the Urnax, which is the race that you play are incredibly adaptable, so when the threat of the Crystal Scourge came to light, they were quickly able to train themselves in the arts of swordplay. The Swordsman is the backbone of the Arnak armies and makes use of slash damage. The, the Raken Archer, which, again, I love it. Uh, the close bond that the Arnaks have with the Raken uh, has allowed them to train together from a mounted force. Like the st uh, standard foot archers trained in the barracks, the Raken Archers make use of piercing damage. Uh, again, I love them. <laughs> it's the freaking Rankins, man. Uh, Trogs are Urnex that were trapped in the collapsed mines and muted by the dark powers of the crystals. However, they remain friendly to the Urnex and thanks to their powerful bodies are living siege weapons, making use of blunt damage. Pretty ballin'. So the heroes, I I don't think I've actually experienced the heroes yet. Maybe this is in like a future release. I know they were they had a, a dungeon aspect for a little while, but they had to take it out right now for certain certain issues that were popping up. But I uh, I would expect that they will get that hammered out, and we will see that come to light later. Yeah, ha heroes haven't been in yet. Cool. What's the hash link again? Um, well then, would you drop that hash link one more time? 
So here's your system information. This thing doesn't really, I, I'm running it pretty much wide open and it's doing just fine. Um, eight gigs of RAM. And we're, if you got a gaming PC, I mean, we've usually got 16 gigs, but if you have eight, you have the ability to turn those things down and run it off of four. So let's see, what else we got to dive into here? So the community. So they do have a Facebook. Let's go take a little look at the Facebook. Seems to be updated since, yep, yeah, August 27th. Hitting 10,000 players and updating Hash Rush. It's a nice little milestone. I'd say so. Oh, look, Nine Lives Arena. We had those guys on not too long ago. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, you know, I always hang out in Discord, so that's, you know, that's my jam. That's usually where I'm at. And that's where I've actually got to meet a lot of these guys. So if you would like a link to their Discord to join, I'm going to go ahead and grab you one. Do, 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 do. I think I can. Edit invite link. Boom, the blow. Yes, it is. That is exactly where you'd want to be. That's where you'll see me hanging out. That's for sure. Discord's where it's at, man. I'm, I'm sorry. If you're a crypto project and you don't have a Discord and you like, you only have like a Telegram, you're missing out. There's so many features in Discord that are cool. Good to see you, daughter of man. Got some of the uh, the Zinzanite locals, as I like to call them, showing up. So it looks like that's pretty that's pretty much it for the website. Not a whole lot to it. Um, so you do have an account that you can set up here. Um, you can't uh, get my password. It's mine. But I have already downloaded the game, and we will be playing that here in about 30 minutes when we bring the guys on. But good to see all you lovely folks. What are you guys thinking about Hash Rush so far? Are you an RTS nut? Do you really eh about RTS? What are you what what are, what are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm downloading it. <laughs> Ooh, they have a blog. Let's go read it, read the blog. Just downloading the game now. That's right. That's right. All right. So it looks like they've got uh, a little bloggy blog going up. I'm going to give them some claps. As Zinzanites, you should go show your support. This is how we do it. Give them them claps. All right. Not give them the clap. There's a big difference. <laughs> Looking at you, Mad. Of course we're going to have marbles tomorrow. What kind of Sunday would it be without marbles? Ron Don Schneezy coming in with that sub. Thank you, sir. A noob. <laughs> Don't judge me, sir. Don't judge me, my noobness. Yo, thank you for the follow. Sid or, uh, Sid. I'm just calling you Sid, bruh. It's too much. It's too much, too much words. Too much letters that I can't uh, pronounce. <laughs> Boom, got the game loading up. It's a pretty painless download. Um, and I think it's only like around, I want to say eight gigs for some reason. I don't know. It could be a little bit more, but it's not like a hundred. So yeah. Actually, I'm feeling even more lost thanks to that. <laughs> so we're going to jump into this last little blog that they had, see what they've been kicking out, see what the updates are. You know, the once over. Greetings, Voyagers. Since the launch of Hash Rush Beta, we have not been sitting on our <laughs> laurels. Laurels? <laughs> but rather been closely monitoring the community reaction to the game, hunting down pesky bugs and expanding the game with new features. Like, that's, that's what it's all about right there. What's more... With the game in a relatively stable state, we decided that it would be perfect time to begin work on our blockchain integration. 
Ooh. I'm sure plenty of you will have a lot of questions about that. After releasing our plans to the community, we once again listened to what the community had to say and identified one area that we had misjudged. The point of selling Rush directly in the game. To fix that, we quickly changed the plans and you can read about that new Rush plans here. It's going quick, actually. Installing from the web took seconds with the breeze. Hey, there you go. So before we go into details of the past updates, we want to share some amazing news. We recently hit 10,000 accounts created in Hashrush. This is an amazing milestone, and we are really excited to see the new players try out and enjoy the game. Big congrats. That is one hell of a milestone. 10,000 is a lot of people that are interested in your game. And, I mean, even if half of them become diehards, you did something. You know what I mean? So updates to Hashrush. Looking back at what we've been publishing in our articles, we noticed that we did not really keep track of the various changes that we made to the game beyond the big feature updates. So we're going to fix that with this article. In no particular order, we are going over the main changes that we made to the game since our beta launch. That's, I mean, keeping your community you know, knowledgeable about what's going on, keeping them in the loop, listening to their feedback. They're doing it right. Um, there's a lot of games out there that, you know, they'll hear people, but they're not going to take any of their ideas. They've got their idea of what they want. Yeah, that's cool and all. But if you ain't listening to people playing your game, come on. Come on. It will be some prizes for the game. Yes, there will be. Uh, we're going to be giving away rush coins. And then at the end of the uh, stream, we are going to be giving away 10 rush coins and a copy of Fall Guys. Because if you don't have Fall Guys, you do want it. I know. I want it. But I have to give it away. Because that's what we do. Oh, we're lucky. So hopefully I win and I can keep it. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> All right, so removing colony levels. Our original plan to have the players unlock new buildings as they gather galaxy points, they would have one building one building unlocked by default, but then they would need to reach a specific colony level to unlock tier two and tier three. I actually played that version. Uh, though this idea was fun on paper, practically speaking, we noticed that this became somewhat of a pain point as progression was rather slow. To fix this, we decided to go into a more mainstream RTS functionality. The colony levels have been removed entirely, and to replace it, players can now upgrade their Voyager's Bastion from level 1 to level 3, which is cool. Uh, don't worry, galaxy points are still vital as they are the high score table in Hash Rush. Beg Wolven to get it. <laughs> Fall Guys is epic. Dude, I've heard it is. I, I really, like, I've got a whole group of people that are telling me, like, dude, just download the game. I'm like, I can't. I can't afford another addiction right now because <laughs> I've been playing League of Legends, uh, TFT, and I'm just, I'm hooked. I, I can't get off of it for some reason. So changing the functionality of crystals. Uh, this ties very nicely with colony levels. If you think back to the start of Hash Rush, crystals, or crypto crystals as we called them, were used as points to show the player's position in the bounty challenges. Then, with the beta, we changed it so that the crystals were converted into galaxy points in the silo. Which, yeah, I've taken part of that. However, looking at the data since the launch of the beta, we realized that trying a competitive element to the crystals was not a good idea, and as it had the potential to, and in some cases already did, skewer the high scores somewhat negatively. What's more, it also defeated the point of the galaxy points as we wanted them to use as a measure of the player's ability to tackle this crystal scourge. That's what a high score is about. I am so glad that they can see that because it's like, okay, I can manipulate the game and get all these points and then be number one. And then there's that one poor side out there playing the game that is, you know, the way it's supposed to be. I've been playing League a lot recently. Can't get into TFT though. I, it, it, it's a learning curve, no doubt. It's free on PS4, but don't know about Xbox. Ah. So let's see. With that in mind, it shouldn't be much of a surprise to know that we've removed the ability to convert crystals to galaxy points. In the game, as it's as its time of writing, crystals do not have a use case. However, we are committed to having crystals as a val valuable resource, so we are working on updating the crafting system so that it uses crystals as a resource needed to craft the item. Neat. All right, so this is there's multiple planets you can play on. All right, so there's ups and downs on playing on certain ones. 
Well, you, one, you may get more crystals, but you may not be able to build as fast or something like that. So be sure like when you when you kick off, I think you get like kind of a beginning planet. And then when you jump to that planet after you defeated all the crystal scourge at it or maxed out your GP, you go to the next planet. And I think if you want to play a little bit more of a difficult setting, you can, which is cool. So new planet difficulties, this was one of the first changes that we made to the game. It's always been our intention to have multiple planets and that a player would need to jump from planet to planet to keep progressing in the game. In fact, if you play the latter sta stages later, yeah, latter stages of our alpha, you may have found your way on an early version of a desert-based planet, Exhibit A. So for the beta, we did remove the desert planet as we wanted to develop it further, visually making it better. So that left us with a bit of an empty hole to fill. Our solution was to have variants of the same planet that the player can jump to when they complete their first planet. Each planet has specific debuffs and buffs, and they get progressively harder with different looking enemies. Neat. However, after the launch of the beta, we realized that there was a small issue with the pathfinding. All the enemies came from a single direction, even though there are three entries at the base. We agreed that this was a great way for new players to start, but also the more experienced players would want something more. So we changed the planet layout for the harder pl for the harder planets to force the monsters of the Crystal Scourge to attack the player from multiple directions. Yes. Planets like Ready Player One. Um, hmm. No, that wouldn't say like Ready Player One, but they are planets within their game. So yeah. Yes, Oasis, dude. I was actually talking to the guys about Ready Player One. Um, if you're a video game nut, you've probably already seen the movie. Read the book. I'm not going to be one of those people like, the book is so much better. No, it is a separate entity. Yes, it has the similar characters, but the storyline is completely different. Check it out. Just do it. The book. Yes, the book. It is a ballin' one. All right, 12.36, we are getting time to bring the guys on, so we're going to dig through this just a little bit more. Then we're going to set up a marbles race. Um, be sure to have your questions ready, and like I said earlier, get your username for Hash Rush. If you win, I need a Hash Rush name. And you need to actually come to our Discord, links are below, and message JC, uh, Kakios, uh, or Woolman, uh, or you can message me, but I probably won't be able to read it till after the show. Okie doke. Yes, that, the book is a beast. It is the beast. Okay, resource gathering. One of the big complaints for our alpha was that the workers would travel to the... That the workers would travel to the next resource spot once their location was depleted. Normally, this would not be a problem, but thanks to the crystal fog and the patrolling monsters, this led to players losing almost all of their workers if they did not constantly monitor them. <laughs> Which can be a little bit of a pain. When the beta launched, we entirely disabled the automatic movement from locations. However, proved this to be a bit extreme reaction as with the solution, this solution, players had to once again micromanage their workers. But at least they didn't lose their workers. To fix this, we recently implemented a 3 meter rule, so if a resource point is depleted, if there is another resource of the same type within 3 meters of the work, they will automatically move to it. That is good solution. Can't really argue with that. Show me game. Hold on here, just hold your horses, sir. Don't get snippy with me, Mr. Mad Ed. <laughs> Alright, so, got a little bit more to dig through here. And we will do the Marbles Race. So, highlighting the orders. This was actually a big one. One of the biggest early issues was the lack of feedback for the players when they ordered a unit to gather resources or to attack a monster. This led to a lot of frustrated players as they would regularly send their units next to the target instead of activating the ability, be it attack or gather. To fix this, we recently added a much needed highlight that triggers when the player sends their unit either attack all units or gather resources, workers slash prospectors. Fine, I'm not racing. <laughs> Look, you're you're literally throwing a fit, man. Why why? Why why are you throwing a fit right now, bro? Stop it. <laughs> All right, so 
rebalancing the combat. Getting the combat system is a big task and we knew it wouldn't be perfect from day one, so we paid special attention to what players wrote about the combat and made specific changes. Asara HP increased, the Asara is in fact a mini boss and the HP was too low. Stump root, stump root tentacle HP, Oh, that sounds terrible, but stump root tentacle is a rare enemy and so needed to be a bit more challenging than it was. Fisher HP increased, the Fisher's HP was too close to the slasher. A glass cannon unit, so increasing the HP put the Fisher in line with its bulkier, bulkier size, so it's a little bit more tanky. Uh, Fisher damage increased, the balance of HP changes, the Fisher attack needed to come down just a tad. Uh, ter Tervis HP increased, we saw the Terribus die too quickly, so a slight bump in HP helped it to be a better challenge. Great, I'm going to get my butt handed to me on this one. Uh, so Crystal Fiend HP increased, this is the end of the planet boss, so it needed to be a lot stronger. That's a scary looking chicken. That, that's a scary looking tickle chicken with them, them long little fingers. Don't release the tickle chickens. <laughs> What's more, we also changed the watchtower so that the range was increased, but the power was de decreased. No! That means I gotta build twice as many. This particular balance change was made in preparation for an upcoming change to the Terabus, uh that we'll, that we'll see it change from melee unit to a ranged unit. So that is it for the news update. We hope you enjoyed reading it. Hash Rush is free to play, so all you need to do is register an account on our website and download the game. If you're interested in learning more about the game, join our Discord or Telegram and you'll get to meet the game developers. I gotta say, it's a solid update, Paige. Um, well done. Well done indeed. So it looks like we've got about 19 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and set up the Marvel's track. And we're going to launch it here in about nine minutes. So we can take a little bit of, I don't really have, I don't know how many questions I can answer, but I'll try. So what y'all think, man? This seemed like a game you would be interested in if you're not already playing it. I can see some of you already downloaded it, probably playing it a little bit. What you guys thinking? How y'all feeling? ERC-20. They will be utilizing the ERC-20 blockchain. That is what the uh, Rush coin is built on. From my knowledge, I am not on the team. So, don't quote me. <laughs> meaty claws. Got the meat claws, bruh. I like the fact that they're they're utilizing kind of their own. Yeah, it's an ERC twenty. See, that's ERC twenty has some really great plug and play abilities. So this could give them the ability to kind of go across multiple platforms pretty seamlessly. No arguments there. All right. Random track. All right. The track's coming up, folks. If you're one of the regulars, you know what that means. Exclamation play right there in the chat, and you'll see your name drop right here. There's Ahmed. Bullet French. Woven. Unity. Squids or Gibbs? <laughs> The prize for this one will be 10 Rush Coins. Valued at, it's probably about 10 bucks worth of Rush Coins. Mmm, money. <laughs> I would hold on to it though. Rush is in beta, or Hash Rush is in beta. So you gotta keep in mind that as they release things, it's only going to catch more attention. Next thing you know, you're going to be breaking their 100,000, you know, downloaded uh, milestone. So, yeah. I hope my marble can actually stay on the track this time. No promises on that, man. No promises on that. I'm sad because I cannot race. 
If you guys are new to the stream and you want to play, all you got to do is type exclamation play for your chance to win those rush coins. <laughs> you need some stabilizer. Hey man, I have literally dusted off a few things that I didn't even think I had anymore. Next thing I knew, I had like 10 units and they're like worth all this money and I'm like, I couldn't sell them, but I'm just going to get into the game again and next thing I know, I'm addicted again. So yeah, that's how it goes. At least for me. There's Daughter of May. Mr. DG. So we got about 15 people on the track, but we got uh, we got like 24 viewers. Well, well, come on, man. Come on. Let's step it up. Let's step it up. Sixteen. I want to see at least twenty. At least twenty for our first race. I know that everybody likes to wait for the grand prize, but All right, we got about five more minutes and then we will kick this off. No. Oh. And then we can show some gameplay and we're going to bring uh, Nathan and Chris on. And they're going to be able to answer your questions that I'm sure plenty of you have. Uh, probably a lot about the blockchain. What's that going to be implemented? Uh, what is going to be implemented on the crafting? I mean, there's, yeah, there's plenty to talk about. So in a game like this, what would you guys be excited to see? I'm going to go eat, be right back. Here, eat a sandwich for me, bro. Tendy's feeling a little famished. Now, me being an RTS player, like, I've, uh, I remember playing Dune way back when, and I was like, this is so cool, you know, I can build these units, I can attack how I want, it's, uh, it's, it was kind of a linear story, but it wasn't because, you know, there was so much influence on the levels, and seeing, um, you know, RTS being done in, on the blockchain, it's surreal, it's cool because that just, it doesn't stop growing. Uh, like I was telling the guys earlier, I was like, Dune, yeah, you know, you know. Um, you know, back in the day, StarCraft, you know, there was World of Warcraft, uh, you know, Tides of Darkness, the expansion and all that, which was really, really good. But I feel like, uh, ooh, what's your dream blockchain game? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. I'm going to talk about StarCraft for just one more second, and then I'll go into that one. Um, but StarCraft was uh, really like released and played in 1998. You know, Multiplayer was introduced in 1993. Uh, the first deathmatch was uh, through Doom. So, you know, it was pretty, pretty big. Yeah, you did send me deep into thought with that one. Um, but, my... See, it wouldn't just be a game for me. It would be a library. Um, but I want to see classic games get thrown onto the blockchain. Um, you know, I want to see uh, Golden Axe played in a 3D arcade. You know, that was, you know, in a virtual world or something like that. I want to see the games kind of expand more into the world. Um, if you've watched Ready Player One or you've read the book, it talks about how, you know, Star Trek world is right next to Star Wars and you can go seamlessly in between and, um, you know, you can teleport to all these different areas. You can actually go to school. Um, hell, I mean, people will be able to walk through a grocery store, purchase their groceries and then, you know, show up on their doorstep. That's like the direction I want to see it go. It's not necessarily just a game that I want to see on blockchain. It's the universe that will be built around it. That's what I want to see. I think that's a good answer, right? <laughs> oh, good luck with that, Sega. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. 
All right, guys. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right, we're about to kick off this round. So if you want to get in, you want to win those 10 rush coins, you got to type exclamation play. That's going to put your marble out on the track. And then we're going to have ourselves a winner in just a few minutes. We got 18 people on the track. We almost got 20. We almost got 20. Can't have all the team getting on here because, I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose. So. I want to race. Trust me. I want my rush coins for free, but I can't. I'm a host. It doesn't work that way. It's like, yeah, he was doing a contest that he won himself. That doesn't sound like a setup at all. <laughs> all right. 12.50. The countdown is on. 45 seconds for your chance to win. I wouldn't mind seeing an AR open world blockchain game built on blockchain like Pokemon Go and etc. Yes. Um, there and that's I, I see it going that direction. I do. I really do. Alright, 20 seconds. Here it goes. First set of rush coins. And I'm really interested to see how what Hash Rush turns into. Like, I mean, I just see endless freaking potential when it comes to like, you know, real time strategy. And this is this is how much you have in a beta. Oh yeah, yeah, it's gonna be Bala. All right, guys, here we go. Oh, let's see, Chris, you are leading out the gate. Bullet French overtakes you though with one Unity right behind. Little Owl, good to see you, dear. Good to see you. The Bullet French gets held up, hitting the blocks, but makes it past. Miezikataz. I think I might have said that right. Hits the teleport. Oh, this is a rough one. Oh, this is probably the worst track we could have got, guys. There will be very few survivors. I, I, I know it. Rondon is actually the holder on this level, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Squid, 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 squid. Boom, squid gets it, dude. <laughs> squid coming in with the early win gets his 10 rush coins. Congratulations, sir. I am fantastic, little owl. For real, for real. All right, squid, I need you to come into our Discord. DM Kakios or Wolven. We're going to need your username for uh, Hash Rush. We're going to need your username off of Twitch and Discord. Obviously, we'll get the one in Discord whenever you message us, but you know. I gotta say it. Well done. And everybody else died. <laughs> Oh, that, that level is so brutal. That would be the first one that we get. Ours. Ours, Squid. Uh, link's right below. So you'll see our Discord. Just click that and it should send you right in. And that sh that's pretty much it for this race. We're going to have four more races at the end of the show. Uh, 10 hash uh, or rush coins will be given away for those and the last winner will get 10 rush coins and a copy of Fall Guys So stick around. I'm gonna go pick up Nathan and Chris. I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. See you in a few
All right, they're going to need a few minutes to set up. Everybody be patient. We will be back in a few moments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Let's see if we can get these guys full screen on here. Make sure everything's coming in nice and crispy. Oh, come on, Twitch, with your delay. There we go. Hey, guys. Hey. There they are. Welcome. Say hello to the co-founders of Hash Rush, you guys. This is Nathan and Chris. Nathan on the right. Chris on the left. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. No yeah. worries. So, hello, the Zenzo community. Awesome to be here. Cool. Very cool. All right, so we are going to kick up Hash Rush. So, guys, if anybody in the chat has any questions, this is a nice time to start bringing them out. Let's yeah, open up the stream as well. Cool. So we can see. Yeah, nice. Yep. Do I realize my voice is like that right now? What is my voice like? Oh God, did my, <laughs> my voice changer might have came on. Hold on. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's on Titan. <laughs> okay, that that cleaned that up. <laughs> for us, yeah, for us it was all right, but yeah. <laughs> that is my uh, that's that's the potato overlord voice. <laughs> oh, you are the potato, right? Yes, I am the potato. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually, no. The potato just lives here, and he just hijacks the stream every now and then. Yeah. Okay. Gotta have some kind of technical difficulty, right? <laughs> All right. So we, I just launched the game, just hit play, uh, guys. Like I said, this is uh, <laughs> this is Nathan and Chris, not in the uh, the crazy voice. So if you guys have any questions, you guys want to throw at them, like I said, this is the time. All right. So we're gonna go jump straight to the play, and I love the opener here. So guys, just kind of sit back and watch and soak it up. Yeah, that don't look good. A great tragedy has befallen this realm. The recent crypto storm destroyed many races and societies here in the Hermian galaxy, but the poor members of the proud Trinel race were most cruelly affected as the survivors on their planets endured a hideous de-evolution. But with great tragedy comes great opportunity. Yeah, he pissed. Salvation now lies hidden beneath the surface of these infected planets in rich veins of crypto crystals. The Traveler's grand plan will need you and the many other voyagers marooned in the galaxy to guide the Urnax as they collect the crypto crystals that infest their worlds. The future of the Hermian galaxy depends on you. No pressure. <laughs> there it I is. Watched, I watched this one like a thousand times, but I still get goosebumps when I'm watching it. Yeah, you, so, you, nice. you did something when that's like that, man. So it looks like we had a question pop up. Uh, what made you guys decide to get a development of this game? What was the ambition behind it? Um, yeah, I'll start. You can, yeah, yeah, you can tackle this one. I think, uh, I think when we uh, started back in 2017, we uh, uh, the idea was to you know to combine blockchain and gaming and uh, create a way to um, to allow players to withdraw value from their time in the game and uh in this in this sense in cryptocurrency because when i uh, when i first came to nathan about the idea like let's 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 you know let's combine blockchain and let's give that a box this you know this combination of possibility to uh, give value to players i think uh the hatbrush idea was born only after that because first i was the idea that okay let's create a game that benefits the players as much as the developers. And then we were like, you know, we love RTS uh, games, and uh, there's not there's not any like new faces in RTS anymore. It's pretty old genre, and it's mm -hmm. losing its old momentum. And we thought like Hash Rush can be that, you know, that fresh fresh new face uh, that can bring back, uh, you know, the old glory days of, uh, of um, the RTS, like StarCraft and Warcraft games that we and Nathan. Yeah, Nathan played a lot uh, when we were kids. Mm -hmm. uh, you made one up. Um, yeah, when Chris um, came up to me with the idea, uh, at first it was, uh, since I was not into the crypto space that much myself, uh, while, while Chris was, when he said, that, yeah, let's make, let's make a game out of the bat, RTS was the way to go. Uh, and we still are firm believers of like bridging the um, crypto space and the gaming space is, 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 is the way to go to mm -hmm. um, teach uh, new players about crypto that it's not just scams and, 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 and all that. We, we want this to be like a, a, a learning experience as well. And of course, fun playing a good RTS game. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's a good point, like to touch upon as well, that I think we here in PC games believe that like gaming could be the gaming is gonna be the killer out of like blockchain is gonna bring it to the main screen. We think like that which is gonna like eventually do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool. All right, so I got to do a quick sound check here. It looks like you guys were turned down. So how are they sounding now, chat? Are they need to be turned up a little bit more? Still quiet? Okay, let's see if we can get you guys open a little louder here. Ready, right. ready, spaghetti. Ready, ready, spaghetti. They sounding a little bit better now, guys. Keep talking at me, fellas. Hey, can you hear us? Yeah, this is Nathan and Chris from Hashrich. Can you hear us? Let's see. There's always that five second delay, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like it's changing. Hmm. <laughs> Here, I got an idea. Let me see something real quick. All right, talk at me again. Hey, hey. Uh -huh. There we go. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Go to 100. <laughs> Don't tell me how to live my life, Mad. Better, but not good. That's strange. Hmm. Well, let's see here. We'll see if that works a little bit. Oh, it's, of course. Hmm. Just have them yell. Yeah, that's right, guys. Just yell at the mic. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I'll just, I'm going to crank mine down and let, let you guys adjust the volume out there. I'm chopping wood, smashing rats. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, so. I don't know, but for some reason it seems lower. Wow, okay. So this makes perfect sense. Can you... There we go. Okay, OBS 64 was the one. Okay. Okay. Now how they coming in, fellas. Nice. nice. Yes, there we go. Oh, I knew that. Um... I was testing you guys. Y'all all failed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> There we yeah. go. Okay. All right. So it looks like everybody can hear us now. All right. Now I guess I can get y'all back on the screen. Blam. All right. There's their faces. Budimus. No harm, no foul, right? <laughs> All right. So back into the game. So if you guys have any more questions y'all want to throw out, that you can actually hear them now. Um, easy. Yeah, it was so easy. Um, be sure to throw them out. I'm going to kind of go into the uh, little walkthrough here. So if you go to the orb, that's going to kind of be your introduction for new players, right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. We have videos there, like, we, our part, like the key, key, key uh, game, game mechanics. So every player who starts playing it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see and hear you guys. <laughs> okay, so we got any update on when the skins are coming? Um, that's a good question. I think uh, I know that there's a lot of like community members that we we already dropped skins to during the alpha mm -hmm. uh, test phase. We did we did a few cool events on uh, uh, Latvia hundred, uh, basically the country where we we are both from. Mm -hmm. uh turned 100 last year and we dropped two skins there and um and right now the thing is that we're 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 redesigning the skin system a bit 
So uh, we're probably going to drop the skins back in the game, um, drop it to the community members. They, to be honest, they're all there, but uh, we just are uh, going to drop it back in the game once once we have finished the redesign of the skin system. Um, I can I, I can tell that there's going to be a few skins left out uh, because we want to, but we're going to drop in new skins and just give the community members new skins that are going to be more polished, uh, better designed um and yeah just cooler in general right sweet yeah. very sweet so when y'all um when y'all started making this game where did y'all draw inspiration from did y'all like were y'all into rts before this was i mean when you decided to make a game was that the one that the one genre you're like that's the one we want to work on um Way back when, uh, <clears throat> when we were kids, we used to play Stronghold 1, uh, making custom scenarios, uh, StarCraft, WarCraft 3. Um, basically, we were playing RTS after RTS after RTS. Yeah, we, we used to play all RTS games. Like uh, me and Nate and our child, childhood friends from uh, the first step we made. Cool. And, uh, we uh, and we, I remember LAN parties at that time. You, you know, you didn't have multiplayer. You had to like do a LAN party, and uh, me and uh, me and Nathan both played all like Age of, Age of Empires, Stronghold. It was Warcraft. The painful matches of Heroes of Might and Magic. Oh, 3. so many oh. heroes, oh, dude. And, uh, That's a and it just, drop. <laughs> and we just, I don't know when we when we first came up with the idea of like creating a game that is like play to earn we automatically knew that we want to create a uh, strategy game uh, right. because i don't know if you heard us before we were pretty, pretty quiet but um the idea of making a strategy game is because we both love strategy games and uh, and the genre itself has a huge potential but you know it has lost a lot of momentum during right. the past year and there's not really any new fresh uh title out there you know, with the Warcraft Reforged, it was everybody, I think, believed Dude. it was coming. Oh, but, yeah. man. That's yeah. bringing up a wound right there. <laughs> yeah, just, just remove that band <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just straight took a lemon and which all right, here, let me remind you of that pain. Yeah, because, I mean, the way that they showed that, and, I mean, this is, you know, this is one of those things. Oh, God, I'm being attacked. Uh, this is one of the issues that kind of happens with it is it's very misleading um there's you know they said that they're going to do all these things and basically all they did was just kind of reskinned it and send it out um In a book, hey, yes yeah they're definitely being led astray so that's cool though like i mean that kind of says y'all know a lot about the genre and not only are you you know building on something that you've played a whole lot it's something that you have a lot of respect and love for. And I think that's cool. Yeah, um, and people that we have drawn in, you know, like people who help us design the game and design the in-game economy and design the tokenomics and everything. I, they all are huge fans of art, like RDS games. And mm -hmm. you know, when, when we we're all we all work remotely, uh, yeah. we don't we're not all uh, all in the same place. But uh, when we meet up, what we do are basically uh, StarCraft multiplayer games. That's how we well, that's how we interact with each other. And and um, shout out to TSG, our developers, uh, Christian and Adrian. And uh, Adrian is our uh, key. Uh, he's our lead um, artist, uh, basically the artist. And um, he man, I, he plays StarCraft like insane his 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 he's bad a piece, yeah he's a he, he makes he makes decisions so fast and he can do things so fast it's, it's you know it's a bit annoying but uh still it's <laughs> uh yeah so so awesome very cool so we had another question it said did you did you have, it's, i'm pretty sure y'all did y'all played command and conquer huh yeah generals yeah we we used to have a. Uh, there was a Rick. One of the he was. I think he was one of the lead producers on uh, um, Command and Conquer. Right? He, yeah, our <clears throat> our previous uh, game designer. He was um, working on the Command and Conquer uh, series. Right. Um, yeah. 
way back when. And um, 90s. yeah, he was a great asset to the team. Uh, but as things go, sometimes it mixes, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I get that. Trust me. So but he gave a lot of input in the game, and I, the story wise, I think it was the biggest. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Let's see. Uh, Mizgatez, how. Uh, wait, no, this is Service Nomad. Uh, what are your plans for development of the game? What is the ultimate goal of the project? Cyberspot? Mm. There's, okay. there's a picture destroying your column. Yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> I got this. Uh, do you want to, maybe Nathan, you want to? Um, <clears throat> I would say um, the biggest milestone that we have is um, when you have three uh, factions um, and, of course, PvP multiplayer because uh, every faction will have to work uh, on a PvE uh, status uh, for some time. And when all factions are basically live and at the same uh, level uh, then we will try pvp and that's when the multiplayer really kicks in yeah very cool i think from, I, that's from uh from a blockchain aspect for, of the game and maybe more of like financial aspect as well you know it's important for, for to keep the game alive and uh going i think it's to create a economy in the game that is self-sustainable through p2p trading i think that's a uh, huge uh, the most important from that from that side basically we want to create a game that you know allows players to easily and freely trade with each other that's enhancing the blockchain part but you know getting uh, a fee from those trades is something that and get us get us enough money to keep on going i think that's the end goal there nice uh, that's that's honest I, I, yeah no, no objections there so let's see uh, Mescataz, how excited were you guys when you raised funds during the ICO? Did you realize that uh, the time that Hash Rush was going to be huge? Um, I think I think we uh, we don't really call it ICO. We call it crowdfunding campaign more because it's still a game, and it was like we you know ICO is mainly what pointing out is that that uh, like you will you know you will win you will get that much profits out of this coin or. We, we never, you know, commercialize that way. We are here to play the game, but um, in a the, in the sense, when we got the funds in, I think it just showed us that um, there's there's people believing the project and the idea of play turn, uh, and uh, that, that just gives us more drive, of course, to go out and deliver. And, um, and I think when me and Nathan first wrote an article about like play turn, uh, game that didn't really go into much of, of, about hash rush and everything, and we, when we got um, yeah attention in the blockchain space. That's when we knew that like we have to you know we have to go and follow this dream of um, yeah world of play turn, and uh, yeah and the hash rush just came after that and was in the middle of all of that. Hmm. So uh, um, we're just you know we're we're right now. Trying to trying to deliver the idea of what where we came from in 2017. Uh, that's, that's super cool, man. Because it it's a hard road, and I, I like how you said it. It's like no, this this wasn't more of an ICO. This was more of a this is we need the funds to build this game. And you know the ICOs that plagued 2017 and early 2018, a lot of them were just blatant cash grabs. They were using keywords that were hot at the time, trying to just draw as much money as they could out from people. And it looks like y'all approached like, hey, we've got this idea. Let's, if you're on board with it, help us out. Yeah, that was that was the idea behind it. And I think when back in 2017, when we, yeah, when we, when we did it, I think we, I think we missed like the huge, uh, huge jump in ICOs that were at the end of the 2017, we did it much earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just knew that we already had like the MVP. We already had built it from our own funds. And um, we already had like the, you could basically the plan and all the concept was there. Um, but you know, there is to build a game that totally disrupts the current uh, system, how, you know, games work, you know, games that are not based on microtransactions and, gambling 
Uh, yes. it's, it's hard and it just takes time and it takes time. And I, we hope that one day, like the standard that we're building here with this player driven economy and, uh, and uh, community driven content as well is going to be a uh, standard for the games in general. You know, that's what we want to see. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So this is uh, fun memories of land parties growing up. A friend had a black light and a fog machine in his garage and turned it on while we played Starcraft. I think everybody's seen the picture of the one guy playing Starcraft in a land party where he's taped to the ceiling. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that is literally a testament to our era. We may not yeah. have space, but damn it, we'll make room. <laughs> That's very cool. All right, so on a side note, Arby's beef and cheddar sandwich glow in black light. I can honestly say I did not know that. Oh, well, shout cool. out to Arby's. <laughs> Call us. Um, so. If y'all guys have got any more questions, be sure to drop them in the chat. I am currently getting beat up by monsters when I'm not looking, but I'm getting that GP when I can. Let's see, my worker. Looks like he jumped in the mix. Do the workers actually attack? They do, right? Okay. Yeah, they have a um, they have attack capabilities. Uh, we're going to try to move them a bit away from that system, okay. uh, but self-defense is... is, is I would say it's a, it's better than they would just run away if you if the enemy units would try to attack them. Right. No, I got you. Because I mean, that's like in StarCraft and everything. Yeah, you could use them because I remember a lot of people would do the little hatchling rush and then just send out a bunch of them to just you know disrupt their base early on. So it's cool that they have that attack aspect. But I mean, you know, two or three of them are gonna get you know their hand you know butts handed to them by bursting a slacker so you probably want to make sure you got some swordmen out there yeah and uh and i think in alpha when we first introduced combat system there was this tactic i think used on some of the community members i would i would like to shout out unity by the way i think he was the one pointing out that you can do that basically just uh create workers and they just clear it out Yep. Uh, the planet we 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 did a lot of rebalancing and uh yeah heading to beta cool very cool uh let's see so at one point hash rush was going to integrate actual crystal mining using computer processing powder uh for obvious reasons this was scrapped what was the thought process behind the pivot um basically the thought, uh, thought process was always the you know the play turn like how to how to create a way for players to generate revenue at that point from the game, and we um, and at that point we wanted to create a way that player could withdraw funds, and it was a pretty basic idea that we would create like a hashing pool, and the best players could split it up. Uh, but because of the you know crypto dropping and um, and everything, you know. It just it wasn't sustainable anymore. So yeah. what we did is we we redesigned everything and we just redesigned everything about uh, around trading. Mm -hmm. um, still, it would be a key part anyways. But like we had to we had to drop that idea. And yeah, of course we would love to have it in and we would love to you know split yeah. the fund with the community. But you know some 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 ideas are not not meant to be. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> And in game, in game design, you understand that I think Hashrush has moved out from a lot of like we have yeah. we have changed a lot of things to really come you know compel to the modern audience uh, community as well, right, Nathan? Yeah, there have been many ideas that we have. At first, when you put it on the whiteboard, you're like, "Yes, this solves basically everything." <laughs> After a few weeks, you you look at that idea and you're like. This causes so much <laughs> chaos. <laughs> like this, this one point, this one sentence. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there has been a a, a couple of uh, situations like this, um, but all these situations are learning experiences uh, for the future, and um, yeah, shaping and uh, molding the game. Yeah, no, and I get that. I mean. Um... And I, I'm right with you on that. Sometimes it looks good on the whiteboard, but after a little while, it's like, ah, wait a minute. This is this is just going to make everything go wrong. 
<laughs> and it's funny how one light of code can literally just make everything yeah. go chaotic. Um, in development jokes, guys, we got them. So, let's see. yeah, that happens. So, any more questions anybody wants to throw out to these guys? Come on, don't be shy. Now, me personally, like when it comes to the RTS and the fact that y'all actually come up with like a scoreboard and everything and y'all are doing it, like I seen y'all did away with being able to convert the crystals into GP um, mm -hmm. that makes a whole lot of sense to me because then you have somebody who's just sitting there literally just farming the GP yes that, and I think, I think that one somehow it from the last question that was from the community and asked about the you know splitting the hash power and and I think that was another another point where it never made it to the game because the game wasn't stable enough. Mm -hmm. And um, Nathan, yeah, he wanted to add on that. Sorry. Um, the conversion was, um, I would say, it was more of a patch and a testing experience mm -hmm. uh, for, for for to have a. At first, we were thinking of the colony levels to be the sole progression system of the game. That it would be the way that items, planets, uh, playing experience would be basically leveled. Um, but it, it, um, with the how many units you can kill and how many galaxy points you can get from those, it was kind of. Uh, we thought that the GP conversion could be changed into something better, like the crystals would be used in crafting. Um, so we did switches on that. Yeah, and uh, crafting is going to be a huge, huge, yes. huge part yeah. of the game. When we when we introduce heroes, it's it's going to be, I think, one of the key opponents. Like getting your, you know, getting into the trading. I think mm -hmm. crafting is gonna be like the to get to the trading part, you will need to go for crafting, right? So it means that you, you're opening up a whole new world once you get into crafting. And crystals are just going to be a going to be a, a, a yeah key a part, of the come yes. up, a key component of that. So uh, crystals are here to stay, guys. So don't worry about that. <laughs> I ain't gonna be getting rid of the crystals anytime soon. So yeah. let's see, any plan for a Linux version? Oh, um, I'm we're getting this. Uh, yeah, often and uh, we know we're building on Unity, mm -hmm. so we could support it. Um, but you know the dev hours that basically what we can do is uh, we want to do it, but we're we're u we're utilizing the time another uh, right now another um, yeah uh, opponents uh, other other game uh, features. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we did um, we did a we did a post on Reddit in the strategy gaming like subreddit mm -hmm. and one of the, uh, uh one of the uh, comments that we got and had most upvotes was about like when when are you going to get a linux version of the game so we know it's important when, when we're gonna we're gonna try to do it as soon as possible very cool so in what ways players will be able to earn in game would there would there be nfts mm -hmm. yeah. Um, there are, I, I, I would say there, the, the key way to earn is still, uh, the trading, you know, you have to get into the P2P marketplace and you just have to trade items that at that point are maybe more valuable to other players. Now we, I would say there are two, uh, no, there are three ways that player can interact with the game. There's the, there's the players who just explore planets, get resources and craft. And those are traders as well at the same time. And then there are the ones that just want to participate in leaderboards, you know, and they're more competitive. And uh, then, of course, there's this casual player who doesn't really care about any of those two things. He just wants to explore planets and just maybe customize the world. But uh, to really to sustain the, uh, the competitive player, you you there there will need there will be need for these traders, right, and these crafters. Uh, and um, so basically, that's the that's the main way to uh, get money is by trading uh, valuable in-game in items to other uh, players because in the end, uh, we as the developers won't be selling any any items in the store. they all just going to come through the, through the community and uh, players themselves and through the game gameplay. 
and other ways to participate in the challenges as well. And in challenges, we want to distribute both cryptocurrency and uh, valuable NFTs that they can uh, then sell to uh, other players in the P2P marketplace, or they can bring them out and sell them on third-party marketplace as well. That's cool. I like that. I mean, that's and I, it's so easy to just start putting price tags on stuff. I know we were talking about it earlier, and sometimes the punishment just doesn't justify the means. Let your markets and let your community determine the value of something. And sometimes you'll find that you think something might be cheap and turns out it's, you know, a $200 item. And yeah. you don't know until it's out there. So that's cool letting your community kind of decide that. Uh, let's see. All right. So with the move not to sell Hash Rush from the store, how will the game and you guys receive income just from trading fees? I think you kind of explained that uh, before, didn't you? Yeah, we... Uh... Right now, we're going to have the, the key the key factors, trading fees, it's on-ramp fees as well. So uh, basically for players that we have some, we are right now talking to some uh, bigger names in the industry who can help us on-ramp users with US dollar against Rush. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a bigger fee on that and uh, that's going to uh, help us out with the develop, developing. And of course, we... We will, uh, at the beginning, we will sell a few items in the store. Like we were, uh, we want to sell heroes. Um, these are these like more stronger units, uh, just allow hero founder bundles. Uh, but that isn't really to make money, is it's more to just get enough funds to uh, finish the hero system, you know? Right. Uh, but the, the key, um, the key way, the key revenue drives will be the, uh, the fees on the marketplace and, and on ramping users there it is so let's see is there going to be a reward for completing a planet uh yes um first off uh, you're gonna get we're redesigning the crafting uh with the crafting system the unique resources that you right now you can see uh spawning around the map mm -hmm. uh, those will be tied to uh destroying the crystal fiend which is the end boss mm -hmm. of every each planet and by destroying enemy buildings uh, so it gives you a more of a drive to um, finishing planets as fast as you can and get the get the unique resources and then jumping to a new planet to get more unique resources because they're going to be tied to crafting and with uh, multiple new planets and planet types we're going to be spreading out the unique resources on a planet per pl planet basis where if you're on a desert planet, you're not going to be able to get uh, ghost wood or snail slime because those are tied to a forest planet. So players will be able to, will have to move from planet to planet to search for these items and unique resources. Cool. So that I mean, with how many planets are you guys are talking about cranking out? Are you just going to kind of keep them going out as time goes on, or? Are you gonna? You have a kind of a plan on a set limit. Uh, currently, in the uh, let's say in the road in the roadmap, we have listed out a uh, letter nine, nine planets uh, with each, each with their own um, set of unique resources, um, enemy units, tactics that you can that you can play like uh, yeah that sort of thing. I keep those questions rolling in, guys. We'll, we'll, we'll throw them out there. But, um, you know, somebody who's played RTS for a long time, when... I know y'all, like, and I talked about this earlier, the map system. One of the, like, every RTS I've ever played always has their little map in the bottom left or right-hand corner. The fact that y'all kind of have the map as a part of the whole world, being able to pull back and see all your units kind of instantly like that, what made y'all come up with that uh, system instead of just drop putting in a map? Uh, you wanna? I would say first the uh, UI restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, that's a we 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 tried putting it in, in in one of the corners, but that didn't reach a uh, I would say public testing level. Mm -hmm. uh, because in, in in house, it was just like where to put this thing. It, should it be bound to a key or? No, we would just just teach the player 
from from basically when when they get into the game scroll back to see the map and basically your planet is your map that's uh, um right there. <laughs> we had ideas with um certain icons and, and visual indications on where stone is where uh where, where where trees are where your buildings are where the enemy units are basically if you scroll back you can basically see your mini map with the indications that oh enemy units are attacking you see them as like a red dot or yeah we um, we have that in we're probably gonna put that back in but because of optimization we if we had to take it out um because the game still needs uh, optimizing of course and um and i think another point here is that it's a it's a it's a 3d planet you know yeah all other rts's are on uh on uh, on a flat surface. yeah flat surface and that again makes it a bit harder really to create a mini map of of the kind and and i think the idea of scrolling out really and seeing your planet in the universe and maybe in the future we you know we will add other planets around yeah. it's going to give you that that sense that you're you're exploring galaxy and you're really exploring the planet here. Yeah. That's cool. And I mean, personally, like, I, I played a bunch of RTS, and I don't miss the map. Like, I don't necessarily need it. If I need to be able to see, like, my whole area, like you said, I just pull back. And I can see my units and see where people would be coming in and stuff like that. And then it kind of takes the old school kind of RTS feel. But then you can just go right into them. And I mean, you detailed your characters up to where it makes sense to get close. So... It yeah. Works. Uh, I wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be mad if I didn't see a map. <laughs> Which I mean, I don't think that's probably the easiest thing to tackle. And the fact that I mean, a lot of it was due to restrictions and stuff like that. It goes like the old development saying, "When bugs become features, <laughs> it's just one of those things." Yeah, that's a good saying. Yeah. Uh, can you do you know Nathan any other things that maybe at first didn't make sense, but ended up being in the game and everybody... as a feature yeah um hmm it's actually uh especially uh from 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 way back when uh at first we 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 thought that each planet would have a set uh amount of units uh that you basically would go as as like a huge checklist uh you go through and then and, and, um start just killing if you kill all the enemy units, uh, a boss spawns and you kill that one and you're basically done with the planet. But then like, um, say, oh, we can't, I, I can't find the la last enemy unit or I can't uh, just, 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 it was just too much of a chore. So, hey, why not waves? Waves yeah. of enemy, a normal uh, enemy base, uh, basically set those, um, I would say, uh, staples of an RTS, uh, en enemy bases, unit spawning, waves, mm -hmm. all, 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 all that good stuff that, that we uh, grew up with while playing Warcraft 3, Starcraft, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. So let's say, will you guys be collaborating with other blockchains like CryptoKitties and HashRush? I don't know, we want CryptoKitties and HashRush. <laughs> it's an attack cat. <laughs> well... well that is not too far fetched because we have uh, raking units, and imagine um, you could put your customized, let's say, Crypto Kitty as a skin for your raken unit. Okay. So that is not too far fetched. Very cool. Yeah, okay. that's kind of like multi, you know, like cross plot, uh, cross promoting, and you know, getting like other NFTs in the game and using them. You know in our universes i think it's pretty cool and uh yeah we could definitely explore that further um, cool yeah i mean and see that's i i personally like that i like to see the integration between other things kind of collab up and stuff like that and uh you see these cross things that come up but i have one question i have to ask first where did the name rakens come from <laughs> At, at first, Come yeah, at first, like uh, okay, we need we need like cavalry units. So uh, at first, we were like, okay, so we need a, we need an animal uh, on on which the air next could ride. Of course, horses seem like too 
too much of a, uh, I would say in this world, as you look at it right now, uh, horses kind of don't, don't, don't fly well. Uh -huh. uh, um, so we thought uh, raccoons um, and uh, rakens uh, came from. <laughs> Come on, I know where it came from. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. It, it, it's actually a fun fact that Chris uh, pointed that out to me before, but yeah, um, Ricky from uh, Trailer Park Boys <laughs> called Raccoon Rakens. Yes, <laughs> yes. I knew it. I knew it. When I saw oh, the Rakin Riders, I was like, they have to be a fan of Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> they have to be because that is such a nod to them. Oh my god. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, y'all. Yeah, y'all just went to epic in my book because y'all did that. Just that name alone. I'm getting completely slaughtered. Um, apparently the. Uh, the waves are a lot stronger than they were just a few months ago. Um, which planet are you, by the way? Uh, just the uh, starter planet, I think. Hmm. Can you, uh, can you press on, uh, P? Yeah. Uh, go into the planet selection screen, please. Oh, no, I'm not on Pharos. I'm on a different one. We're on Ternus 1. Uh, that is the basically normal level, uh, planet. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit... We'll rebuild. Got to be able to take the punches. Yeah, this is a um, another thing that we wanted to also, uh, as a learning experience for the players, it is okay to lose a planet. You, um, of course, if, if you can hold up, if you can hold on to one planet for that long, kudos to you. But the sequence of Either you win a planet and you choose a new one and and then and, and colonize that one, or you lose one, then go to the next, colonize that one. Just the circle of um, going from planet to planet to planet to planet and getting more and more resources to uh, craft new and better items. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, I just, I was getting, I was getting all casual about it. I'd be like, yeah, I can deal with these waves coming in. No problem. But just like in old school RTS fashion, they're getting stronger while you're getting stronger. So yeah, I, I, if you I don't look, protect yourself, you end up in this situation. Yeah, I was looking at the, uh, in the top uh, middle section of the UI, you can see uh, the uh, severity of the waves that you're going to experience. And yeah, you had the uh, assault waves. That's basically the level three. It sends uh, a, a, a rough bunch of units your way, so... We are we're we're doing a little redesign on the waves as well. We we think it's gonna hit probably the life building like in September and then September, right? Yeah. So, so it's, it's gonna cool. be. Like, I mean, me personally, I don't like a game that's too easy. I I want a game that's gonna beat me up and slap me around a little bit and then teach me how to be better. Um, if you just go through the gate and everything's just kind of handed to you and everything else, you don't really have much of a replayability. Um, and when I got to the point to where I could build the towers and defend the waves and stuff like that, I found that I was like, okay, okay, I can handle these. But just like I you know, was saying, if I don't stay up on these things, next thing you know, you end up in this situation. Now, I'm not saying I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, make sure that this all happens. I'm probably just going to reset this planet just to reset it. Now, when I reset the planet and everything, I still keep my GP that I earned, correct? Yes, you have a uh, planet-based GP and the global GP. Mm -hmm. The planet-based GP is set to a 10,000 uh, 10, GP cap, but the global is endless. The more planets you complete for 10K, the, those 10K then, uh, get added to your global GP. Yeah, and uh, the, basically the global GP is going to be the key factor in the P2P challenges. So that I mean that kind of being said, it's fairly forgiving. Um, what I find that in a lot of these blockchain games that if you lose something, it's gone. And you don't get it back unless you buy it back. And these are only just a handful of games, but this was kind of a going thing for a little while. Um, because I think it was uh, not Ultima Online. Was it Ultima Online that was like that? Uh, I'm thinking. I'm probably thinking of uh, another game. It's like a space game 
and you could do all this farming and everything else, but if your ship got blown up, guess what? That's it, cuz. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. that's uh that's brutal and there's a room you know room for that hardcore gaming and everything else like that but i felt like you guys approached it how do we kind of appeal to all sets of gamers the casual gamer the hardcore gamer you know this the person just getting into rts uh the rts you know maximalist that only plays rts i feel like y'all kind of covered a lot of different levels that way what do you think um i would say yes with uh at first, we had only one level of difficulty per planet, mm -hmm. uh, but what what is easy for one player is insanely difficult for the other. Right. So, um, whenever a new player starts a game, he starts on the easy planet, and when he completes that, he can choose either from normal, uh, hard, and he can re retry an easy planet, basically, to get into, get into the game uh, and how the mechanics work. Yeah, and, um, yeah, that's the game. I think uh, that somebody just commented on the stream. But... Yeah, it was Eve Online, and CSC is doing something similar, but they eased everybody into it. They just didn't open it up to where, hey, you could buy these ships, and if it blows up, it's gone. Um, I felt like they yeah. kind of took people by the hand and did it a proper way. I think I think one of the I'm not a game designer myself, but uh, Nathan, maybe you can back me up here but one of the key factors that our lead game designer mark gilbert always says that you don't really have to you know you you don't want to um not teach but like you don't want the player to experience you know you don't have to not teach the player something you through losing and uh failing right you need to you know, teach him through uh, uh progression and that's the best way really to, to do it right yeah, when uh, when a player uh, through through gameplay, when he gets better, he gets better gear, he gets better buildings, he gets better upgrades, so on and so forth. He learns and inevitably gets better because he gets more accustomed to the game. It's like starting a MMO from the start. Like you have your basic armor, you have your basic skills, and the more you play, the more you explore, and the more you basically. Um, get accustomed to the game you will inevitably get better and you will be better than anybody else who yeah. starts the game from scratch and it's always the exchange always you lose some you always have to gain something you know yeah. you knowledge or something but you just can't you know and even uh, at a time when you know it's hard to really design a game where real money is involved let's be honest and it's not only hard to design it from the economy side but from security side as well and from farming side, you know, you don't want the game to be an exploit. Yeah, right. and, uh, and I think that's where a lot of these blockchain games just are missing it. That you have to, that's, it's a really, you have to be really detailed on what you do. You have to keep it still, you have to keep it still fun for the player, but you have to remember that it's the real money involved. Right. And when you, you know, you take something away from a player who has bought it for one Ethereum, for example, because he lost the fight, you know, it seems just too just too rough. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't play that. Well, oh, you lost the too. <laughs> Personally, yeah. those games are hard to get into. But the thing is, is I do think that there is a player base that looks for that. They like being punished. You know, they're the gaming masochists, yeah. as I like to call them. Um, but like you guys were talking about. It's all about proper conveyance. If you cannot convey how the game should be played, how somebody can progress, how somebody can be better, that's when you end up with a lot more issues than you do if you were to take the time to show how to play your game, how to get better before they just get handed out to the wolves. Um, I feel like there's a lot of games out there that just assume the player is going to figure it out, and that doesn't always work. Um, I look at it as from, I want the person who's never played a video game in their life to be able to play this. And if you can do that, your, your conveyance is on point. There's no doubt about it. But, and I, I look at games like from old school, like Mega Man X. When you first start playing that game, you walk about 10 feet and then boom, you collapse and you're in this area where the walls are like this. That's where you first learn how to wall jump. And they don't tell you a single thing. It's like, you're going to stay in this pit until you figure out how to get out. 
just little things like that teach you how to play the game and how to do like charge up your weapon and everything before you even play the first level so you don't lose lives you don't have any kind of worry about continuing or anything but by the time you're done with that first introduction level you have a good idea on how to play the game so it's but there's some games that are out there and these are brand new games that just don't have that they don't have that conveyance um i i felt like there was a little bit of a wall when i came into hash rush but the answers were there like i had to talk to the orb i had to figure out how to build this i had to figure out that and it wasn't just handed to me it was told how to do it but it was rewarding as i was learning how to play the game and that's what it's about yeah um no i think we we still have a lot of a lot of uh things to do on the tutorial and uh side of course yeah at first uh we were thinking of having a tutorial planet uh that would go from like basically a chapter based tutorial planet like oh camera movement gathering resources selecting units uh building buildings mm -hmm. unique resources and so on and so forth but we would we thought that um also how players and people uh interact they, they interact with some visual presentation and the orb kind of facilitates that that part of the space where you see a tutorial played before you and then you say oh let's say in in, in simpler terms uh, monkey see monkey do mm -hmm. um so yeah it would be a very simple and easy tutorial to do in that way well, I mean, there's not this huge learning curve either. If you've been in RTS, you already kind of have an idea of how to approach yeah. it. I've got to build these buildings in order to get these units to be able to make this unit stronger or this building. And it, it, from RTS, you know, but even with the person who's never played it, the videos and everything else, but then you also have the community. The community will actually get out there and back people up and be like, oh, you got to do this. So mm -hmm. there's an infinite amount of resources that you can find to learn how to play the game. Yeah. And um, now, of course, our like the core community that we, we currently are in for art, you know, the RTS people, you know, it's still a strategy game right now, and it's 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 rough around the edges, so we know. And I, I think what we we're trying to add in and how we are trying to build up the user experience is that for a strategy gamer, it's well known. You know, of course, there are a few things that are it just it, it is unique for the game, not only the blockchain part, but from the gameplay side as well but uh still when you were when you're a strategy gamer and you come in you you know you know this is a strategy game right. but of course if you want to hit the mainstream audience and we want this game to really you know go big we uh it's it's really a key opponent to work on the on the first time user experience in the tutorial so uh we're still gonna do a lot of definitely upgrades on that end so now that you can actually level up your bastion instead of having to build up everything you plan on making any kind of visual changes as you level it up yes uh starting from uh, visual aspects like a um uh, a particle effect and a uh, sound of course a sound effect as well um and from the visual aspect uh we see that the voyager's bastion is um it will take uh, some uh, changes, mm -hmm. but yeah, level one, level two, like the inspiration comes from uh, Warcraft 3, the uh, Night Elf faction. Basically, your tree gets more and more grand the way the, uh, with every level that it reaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've actually, like, a, well, I forget the RTS game, it was uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, they kind of had for the elven race they had a tree that would kind of level up so that's kind of cool um, so ba battle for middle earth yep that's the one yep uh yeah that was that yeah was we really played cool. that also so yeah. that was a good one it was a hell of a good yeah, one we already have go isengard <laughs> <laughs> yeah we so, already have we already uh i think designed the two of the art at least for yes. the level two and level three by the way the way uh, i would say we have five uh, uh, levels. Five levels even, so. <laughs> Nate yeah. comes with a, I said five. I said five. <laughs> so, no, the, uh, let's see. Somebody was asking, how long do you expect it to take to clear the hardest planet? Uh, right now, two hours, right? 
two and a half, something well, like that. Well, two, two and a half, uh, if you are accustomed with the, uh, with the wave system that is, that it, that is in right now, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, two hours, uh, but if you play uh, the, um, Vexus 2 and Pyreneus 2 planets, uh, those have an extra um, zone where the enemies spawn. Uh, so basically you have to cover more ground. And if you, if you can't handle Vexus 1 and Pyreneus 1, or even the Pharos 1, then yeah, uh, get accustomed to those first and then choose uh, the higher difficulty ones. Yeah, because I have a feeling that uh, if you just decide to jump into the hardest ones, you're quickly going to find yourself in a uh, precarious situation. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, not only there are more um, uh, bases on the harder planets, the enemy mobs are uh, of a different level. Uh, medium planets have uh, challenge accepted. Yeah, you you're 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 quite the player. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, we, um, uh, no, I didn't lost my trail of thought there. Hey, um, man, trust me, I got yeah. ADD like the best of them. You can dangle string in front of me and I'm done. So, uh, yeah, you're forgiven. <laughs> yeah, the planets, uh, the medium and hard planets, they have mobs of a uh, higher level, meaning more HP, more damage, bigger resistances, so you have to basically get... Uh, if you could tackle a wave with uh, 10 units, with level 2 you need, I would say, 14 units. And the higher it gets, the more units you have to ha you actually have to have in order to kill an uh, enemy wave successfully without losing too many units. Nice. Yeah, because that, that's why the game is, I think, in a way unique as well. You know, you, you're trying, the like, waves are coming, but you're still trying to explore... And you're trying to, you know, expand your colony. So it's like you're 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 fighting an uphill battle, but at the same time, it's it's winnable if your strategy, strategy yeah. your strategy is good. Mm -hmm. Well, I also noticed that y'all actually have more elements to gather. So you have food, you have stone, you have uh, uh, metal, and then you have wood, and then you also have fireflies, which actually help you expand your view of the map. What? What kind of made y'all go down that road to, for instead of the typical just one resource? Um, was it just overdone, I, and you wanted to see something different, or? No, uh, I uh, I would say that the thing is that we wanted to, to, in a way, create more. You know, it's not only about the combat in the game; it's it's about the um, about building your colony as well. And for me and for, for Nathan as well, and for the game designers that are uh, have helped design the game, I think it has been that collecting more resources and having more way of like choice what you you can collect and what you can build. It means that it's a it just gives you that sense of like expanding your colony and building your colony and uh, maintaining your colony. Just yeah. it gives a better sense of that. So it's it's not only a uh, uh, combat game, you know, it's a base builder as well. Right. I like it. So, let's see. Mm, I haven't of course, I think... this update, but I'll be going in after the stream. Very nice. So, it looks like One Unity has accepted the challenge to beat the hardest planet in two hours. <laughs> Who wants to nice. take it on? Well... Right. Uh... How fast you did. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But yeah, in terms of uh, resources and, and why we chose this particular palette, um, like Age of Empires, they have food, stone, uh, wood, and gold. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, as our base, base resources, we have uh, five instead of four, and we have advanced resources like planks, stone blocks, and uh, ingots. Uh, in the future, oh, and crypto crystals uh, as well. In the future, we had ideas to expand on uh, on the fireflies and the food resource. As you can see, there is uh, there is UI space, as you can see right now. Um, so we're going to be um, tinkering around uh, more uh, refined resources for those as well. And it, and I think it gives a lot of like space really for the balancing as well. You know, you can. <laughs> You can experiment a lot when you have that much of like uh, resources. You know, you can really experiment. You can really 
uh, make the game more, I would say, more interesting. You know, we, we I have played several times after, and uh, when I, you know, when I'm in the battle, I suddenly know that oh, I'm missing the resources that are key components, but I'm I have huge amount of like uh, I don't know wood, you know that that it doesn't really give you that good of like combat units. Archers, 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 archers. Yeah, see, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. What resources you have, that's what you build, right? Yeah, yeah and like, and it gives you a lot of like options. And I think again, that's just to expand on the content we have. Well, you're going going to town on that slasher there. <laughs> I ain't let them through that bridge. It's my bridge. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and that's see, I'm I'm kind of a general like, I try to play a balanced field. So I'll have a front line, I'll have a back line, I'll have somebody who's doing healing. You know, I'll kind of do that, uh, um, I wouldn't say meta gameplay, but it's more of a balance, you know what I mean? So I have critters that do what I need them to do. If you find yourself building like one unit and then the counter for that unit comes up, you'll quickly find yourself in a bad situation because there's nothing you can do about it. So let's see, we got one more question before we go into the next round of marbles. Are there thoughts on repairing buildings, like either with a unit or heal over time? I think you can actually repair your buildings as long as they're not being attacked, correct? Yes, if your uh, building has sustained damage, there uh, right there. button appears in that building's UI um, that you can repair that building. Mm -hmm. It costs uh, resources as well. Depending on how much yeah, it has been started. Yeah, it is percentage based on how much HP has been uh, lost. Right on. Right on, right on. Oh, your browser encountered an error. Okay. My connection was interrupted. Okay. <laughs> My laptop's just like, I'm not going to be on the internet anymore. Peace out. <laughs> All right, I got to watch a PlayStation commercial for my own stream. Whatever. All right, so it is about that time. We are about to start going into marbles. We can still take more questions and everything else like that. But for now, we are going to back out of Hash Rush. Guys, what do y'all think? If this is your first time seeing it, what do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about it? Well, I'll have a look at that. <laughs> so, but, all right, so we're going to get some marbles up here, get some jams going on. Hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. It's definitely been awesome having you guys on. Yeah, we do. It's great to be. Yeah, this is our first stream, by the way, so, yeah. Well, y'all are good. killing it. So, I mean, trust me, my, my first stream was uh, not as good. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so let's get some marbles going. We definitely can do this more often. I think um, it's cool. Yeah, this sort of reminds me of uh, one pitch session we had with uh, Japanese investors, and then after we did did the entire uh, pitch session, the uh, the first thing that 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 the uh, I would say the the host of the uh, investor meeting said, y y "You guys look so tense. Why are you so tense?" <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we were just, you know, we had just came up with the idea of like, yeah, half rush and we were, we were looking for investors and, you know, we were, we had never done anything like that. It was like, it was a new experience. I remember me and Nathan, we were totally Su freezing. Yeah, suited <laughs> up. <laughs> we're all so tense. You know, we had no really idea of like how this, how that works, anything like that. Well, I, I think mean, once you do it a few times and you like, you, you're with your community. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you this, I've had my fair share of trolls, but when it comes down to our mods and everything, they are way meaner than any troll that could ever come out. And when it comes to defending, like, you know, Hash Rush or Zenzo or anything, you won't have to say anything. <laughs> Usually your community be like, look here, dude, <laughs> you need to back up. Yeah. That's true. Really, our community is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think really, really proud of having the guys on, and uh, thanks, thanks to everybody who have been supporting us, and, and have become a core community member, and yeah, it has been awesome. Oh, for sure, it's all about the ride, man. It's all about yeah. the ride. 
All right, we got the first track up, guys. If anybody wants to play, all you got to do is type exclamation play to get in on the race. Looks like, let's see, been monitoring the project since 2017. Very impressed to see continual updates and progress. Keep it up. There it is right there. Thank nice, you, man. That's it. It, it yeah. just makes you smile because, you know, I've been in this space for a long time. And nobody has to go out of their way to say anything nice. They don't have to go out of the way to do anything that would help the community. But when people do, it's so appreciated because it's not one of those things that's a given. You earned it. You earned their respect and you earned their loyalty. So that that's something. It is, it is. And, uh, you know, every time that somebody comes in, even a new community member, and writes something good, like, you know, like I, I talked to somebody and, like last week, he was he had some problems logging in, and uh, usually when I help somebody log in, and uh, like the next when he gets in, you know, uh, next question is how are you enjoying the game, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, he wrote to me like this, like this is a cool game, you know. I had it has still some bugs, but you know it has huge potential, and that just you know that gives you this this energy that like I know yeah. I see that somebody's enjoying what you're what I'm doing and what I'm trying to build here and you know that just keeps keeps this uh, thing going yep. yeah I I dig off that energy all the time um sometimes it can be hard and then all it can take is that one person just saying that like you guys are doing great and it can scrape you right off the floor and push you forward um because this this is not an easy space guys especially if you're trying to do the right thing in fact, it's 10 times harder if you're trying to do the right thing. So, you know, hats off to you guys for building something, one that you're, you know, passionate about and have a lot of love for, but two, going about the, the right way and the best ability possible. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Thank and I think, I think you guys are far away from that as well, right? I think your story really represents, like, when, I, when you first told me your story, I was like, I was, in, I was in shock, you know? A lot of people just put their hands and uh, uh yeah draw their just drop their hands and wouldn't do anything yeah and you know but you guys have built something great out of nothing so shout out to Zenzo as well hey man and that's we you know we've seen a lot of different things come through crypto and gaming and blockchain gaming um we've got our own answers and our own approach and when we we had the, you know, the straight up catastrophe that happened to Loner Lease and turned into Zenzo. We, we wouldn't look in and trying to place blame. All we knew is we had to pick up the pieces and we had to make it right. Didn't matter whose fault it was, but it's mm -hmm. on us at this point. And what are we gonna do? Are we gonna just drop it? Or are we gonna do everything to the best of our ability to build something worth building? And I guess that's another reason that we do the checkpoint. We like to see other people that are you know, they, there's a struggle. There's always a struggle, but you're doing the best you can and you're building something you're passionate about, you love. So when we see that, and I saw that instantly when I went to the hash rush community, I was like, oh no, these guys are checking my material. Come on, come on to uncle Tindy. I'll take care of you. Come on. <laughs> it was, and I was just started talking to Chris and then I had a, I don't know. We talked for probably about an hour or two. The first time we talked, um, just going about from old school gaming to our projects and everything else. So I knew there was some chemistry and I was like, well, come on to the checkpoint and here it is. So let's see if we got any more questions. Most likely towards the end. Yes. Fall guys will actually be the last race of the show guys. So there'll be 10 rush coins and a copy of fall guys. Uh, right now we are going to race for 10 rush coins and we're going to go, let's just go ahead and kick it off. Let's see who's going to get this set. Now remember, well, if you want to get these Rush Coins, you have to have a Hash Rush account. So go to the Hash Rush website, make your account, download your game. Do it. It's free. Yeah. And uh, leave feedback as well. You know, please. Feedback's all awesome. Yes. Yeah, join please. their Discord. I mean, this is, I have been in there every day and they are in there every single day. So if there is something that you want to either contribute or bring up, if you found a bug, that's where you go drop it. Exactly. That's, yeah, uh, I think that's great from uh, another, another great point of having like a community driven game is that, you know, you have all of these testers out there that just give you feedback and 
give you bug reports and yeah. and uh, I can maybe concentrate on other aspects of the game. Yes. Uh, awesome as well. Oh, that's very cool. I mean, that's that's the difference between a lot of these games that are out there. You got to listen to your community. I, I've seen some of them that they just put on blinders and they just like, I want to make my vision. There is nothing wrong with that. But don't expect everybody to be on board. You're seeing your vision may not be the person to your left vision, may not be the person to your right vision. So yeah. adapt, become fluid, take people's ideas, introduce them to your own ideas, and you might come up with something truly magical. Uh, but keeping an open mind is very important in this realm. It is. Let's see how many races to the last one. There will be four races to the last one. This being one of them. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we do this every Sunday. We give out Zenzo to uh, the top three winners. Uh, we do 15, 10, and 5. So you can leave making some bucks. It looks like Barney sense. is... Bar Barnal 1246 is leading, but Ahmed is sneaking up. Oh, one unity takes the dive. Come back. Oh, God. Vlad. Oh, oh God. Daughter of May. Paul. Harlock. Everybody's dying. Oh. They're like it's, it, they're dropping through. Yeah, they'll yeah. let the dropper get hit by that hammer and just yeet it off. Ah. This kind of tricks you. It makes it look like you're about to fall off, but you don't. Yo! Uh -huh. What? Ahmed is one of our avid racers, and Barty one two four. <laughs> uh, I think he might slip through. Come on, Barney. Come on. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Dad Gamer sending the lemons. Thank you, sir. Barney slip. Oh, gets hit by one block. This might give Ahmed a chance to catch. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these maps are just brutal. Yeah. Uh, do, you, uh, do you choose them or they're randomly? I just choose them randomly. So I don't uh, really. All right. Barney1246, come join our Discord. Message Wolven or message Kakios and give us your uh, username for Hashrush and your tag here on Twitch. All right? And the uh, lovely Hashrush team, we're going to give those names and everything to them after the show and they will be sending you your Rush coins. I'm really wanting to play this as a Marvel Madness reboot or something. Oh, dude. Marvel Madness on NES. Talk about a name drop. Uh, that was one of the most infuriating games for NES. I clearly remember raging out on that game. Because you just played as a little marble and you tried to get through the track. and But you actually rolled it back and forth. And there was all of these things that would just destroy you. And it was one of those just brutal games. That where if you died you pretty much had to start over. Uh -huh. So yeah. Yeah. Many moons being ma angry at that game. Congrats, Barney. Barney Congrats, says Barney. pass it forward. So, looks like the next round will be worth 20. This actually happens quite a bit. Um, some people just race our races just to have fun. And if oh. they don't want the, uh, the prize, we usually just go over and hand it to the next one. So, this is what we'll do. 20, 20 uh, rush coins will be on the line for this next one. The stakes just went up. And they're about a dollar value each, aren't they? Um, you know, it's still community decides, but uh, once we go live in the game, it's going to be, right now, in the beta at least, it's going to be one uh, one dollar to sell to other players. So that's almost yeah. 20 bucks on the line for this next race, so y'all better get your marble on the track or you're going to get left behind. Exclamation play. That's what you do to get in. Well, let's see. Oh, almost third place. I wonder what a rush coin is worth. Oh, I guess we just answered that. <laughs> let's see. That's the only problem. When everybody starts typing exclamation play, I can't see anything that's being written. Come on, set your marbles on the play. Yeah, come on. Y'all know the drill. Can you sell them right now? Come on, man. Yep. Don't be that guy. Don't be just getting your coins and going out there and selling them. I know how you are. 
of course you can sell them if you want you know you can always ask in the community maybe somebody wants to buy but um we, we we're we're creating a game and we're gonna create a safe environment where players can sell and uh, buy rush coin and, uh, but it, it, it takes time in other words and, uh, save that shit stop trying to sell stuff <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude, just ask it. Me and Mad, like, he's been uh, one of my followers for a long time now, and he's <laughs> he's my favorite neighborhood troll, so I like to troll him back every now and then. <laughs> no, we, we get a lot of the question, uh, where can you uh, can you sell Rushcoin, can you buy Rushcoin in the community, so, yeah. No, no it's... But I think for, for us as a game, it's really important to, to create an easy uh, onboarding process for new players. Right. You know, not to, not to go to a crypto exchange to buy a coin that needed to enjoy the game, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, it took a lot of time and both in the design process and uh, technical process as well to create a way that would be both would satisfy community and would satisfy new users and would uh, would work for us as developers as well. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna soon come out with our own rush pool. Uh, so come, uh, you will see how it works, and uh, we're gonna write a paper on it. So, awesome, yeah. very cool. <laughs> when you want to be the guy, but just end up being that guy. So there's a game called I Want to Be the Guy. I don't know if y'all have heard about it. Uh, it is an instant rage-inducing game. It is literally designed to make you want to pull your hair out. And Matt, uh, we watched this guy LT Zonda. Uh, play through the whole game and it was just a glorious occasion because it took him weeks to beat it and I started playing it because Mad was trolling me to play it and my god if you just it, it, if you seek masochism in a game there's your game no doubt about <laughs> it it is probably like uh, you can spend hours on one area and still not figure it out because as soon as you think you're doing something right it's like ha smash start again <laughs> So you have to start always from the beginning. Uh, it depends if you get to the checkpoint or not. If you get to the checkpoint, you'll start right back at that checkpoint. But if you don't, you'll go back to wherever the previous one is. And depending on how hard you play it, yeah, it can be brutal. Uh, is it something like getting over it? Yeah, it's kind of like something like get over it, but it's more of uh, it every area kind of changes and has its own little thing and there's bosses and then there's a main boss that is just completely and devastatingly hard but did Matt, you try Matt did beat it. did you try getting over it i did not um okay. i didn't want to break my pc because <laughs> in that game there was a point where uh there was like a um it was called don't ride the snake it was basically like a wire. If you jump on it, it just basically takes you back to the start of the game. Oh no! And it was like no. it was like somewhere in the middle of the game, oh. and yeah, and it had like a sign: "Don't try the snake." <laughs> of course, you know curiosity will get the best of you, and you'll end up hitting it. So, uh, see, I'm I'd be getting over it too, Matt. I don't know, man. You're you're some kind of monster, so. I, I, I just couldn't do it. All right, guys, we're going to kick off the next race. 45 seconds. And if you want to play, type exclamation play. And you'll see your name pop up here on the track. Yeah, when I actually watched somebody else play marbles uh, that was in the crypto community, and that kind of inspired me to do it. I mean, I was like, hmm, that actually works. Because, I mean, everybody usually uses, like, a number generator or something like that for their contest. And that's good and all, but I feel like this is way more interactive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the, this is really cool, by the way. I, I have not seen it before you you showed me. I, I watched one of your streams, previous previous ones, and uh, mm. this so cool. That is really really awesome. Yep. Yeah. It's super cool to get people like interactive with it. I mean, when you get like fifty marbles on a track, it gets really really chaotic. Yeah. All right. Uh, have you gotten at one point? Like, what's the what's the maximum? Oh, I think we had. I know it was over eighty for one show. Oh, there was wow. a bunch. There was a bunch of people on the map.
Um, but I think that was pretty much like the highest we got it. It might have been a little bit lower. It was one of our first couple shows. I know the Pivx one was big because we had some monster prizes, so everybody wanted to win. Um, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we were, I forget, we were giving out, I think the grand prize winner walked away with like a video game and like $200 worth of crypto. Nice. So it was a it was a pretty good show. Yeah. Uh, Bullet French, Asubai, Asub, Asub, Asubabi. <laughs> this is my problem, though. I can't read everybody's names. Subadai. Right, Dad Gamer. Oh, Subadai is one yeah. of our community members, by the way. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome person. Really helps a lot out with the, with the bugs and uh, finding them. So. Cool. Well, shout out to the boy himself. All right. Looks like Bullet French is holding on to this one, but there's still a little bit of track left. This particular track looks like you're about to win, but... Yeah, it'll, it'll mess with you. <laughs> it it kind of looks like hell. It, it's pretty much, it's called Devil's Chaos. That's the name of the map, so. That was the one show you missed? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what is that? EGT offered me 0.1 BTC if I'd beat over it hard mode, and I just couldn't do it. Yeah, like, there's some challenges out there for people, like, getting paid to beat these games and i'm like is it worth it almost putting yourself in like a mental institution is it really <laughs> worth it yes yes we see dude come on we <laughs> <laughs> be half million next year <laughs> oh man i love you you're just instant like yeah <laughs> so what if you don't eat for two days you'll be fine you'll be fine yeah easy <laughs> mom bathroom <laughs> yes. <laughs> or hot pockets. Or hot pockets. Oh god, that's when you know it's gotten real bad. That's when you know it's gotten real bad. All right, Kakios. You gonna let Bullet French take it? Mm, I don't know. They're both neck and neck. Pretty much anything can happen. Dead Gamer is not too far behind. Paul Adrian and Copper Tequila. Copper Tequila sneaks out ahead. Mm. Oh, it gets overtaken by Bullet French. Uh, is it like, uh, why is the one uh, in blue? Is it like he's faster or? There's what, actually, what? like, you can actually link an account. Oh, congratulations, Bullet French, by the way. You just won 20 rush coins. Um, uh, Copper Tequila actually has a premium, like, marble. You can actually download an app on your phone and link it to your marble that goes out here on the track and change it up by having uh, like a flame going behind you, how your marble looks, um, what your entry looks, what your outro looks. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bullet French. Nice, right, those could be NFTs by the way. <laughs> I got about $15 for beating I Wanna Be The Guy and it was worth it. <laughs> 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 man i ah, oh, dude i don't know like when i first started playing i want to be the guy i decided to be you know smart and do it on a stream don't <laughs> one you're gonna have mad ed in your corner just being like why are you screwing up like why are you being <laughs> bad um <laughs> what's up love there you go uh, the missus mrs tindo coming in stealing my smokes <laughs> <laughs> she's like sorry sorry not sorry <laughs> oh man we just had our 15 year anniversary dude Congrats. 15 freaking years and she's been putting up with me this long you so were talking she's... about playing a masochist game I am a masochist game and she enjoys playing my game <laughs> <laughs> this was an instance of uh, Smokes Let's Go pretty yes yeah, that, it's pretty much the equivalent. Yeah, smokes, let's go, and just robs me. So, we're going to kick up the next track. God, it has already been almost two and a half hours. That's the thing. Like, when these streams are going, you don't realize how much time's going by. Like, I was just playing the game earlier, and I was like, wonder if it's time to start playing Marvel. Yeah, we probably got about 30 more minutes, and I was like two minutes over. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, <it's> <laughs> 
it's really fun you know it's fun to talk to somebody who's like enjoying game and playing games yeah. it's always awesome hey man like i like i was telling you guys earlier i have such an affinity for this because there are some people who can't leave the house there are some people who are no good at sports there are some people who may not be the best in the math room, classroom or you know something like that and they may get a little beat down for it but if they're in their world in a game and they're the best at it nobody can tell them anything like that's when i was telling people when i grew up in the arcade room i was eight or nine years old versing people that was 16 17 years old wanted to drag me out in the parking lot and beat the life out of me but they couldn't because my mom was there <laughs> and when you're eight nine years old you know mom could be a little mean and <laughs> the the whole idea of it was is that it doesn't matter how big they are it doesn't matter how smart they are if they're in my world i can beat them and primal rage was my game like i was just really good at playing the raptor for whatever reason and yeah there was just something cool about ripping a dinosaur open and just be like ha 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 there's nothing you can do to stop me and then watch this full-grown man pump quarters into this machine 30 times trying to beat you and then my mom being pissed off because she's got to wait three hours i'm like i'm still on the same quarter and yeah it, it was a, it was a beautiful time and i really think that something's been lost uh, through that because it was kind of uh it was a transition period that's when we started to see the online gaming that's when we started to see this and that's when, you know, a seven-year-old can basically call you everything in the book and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, if I was that mouthy at seven years old standing across from these guys, I would not be here having this interview <laughs> because they would have beat me to death and there was nothing I could have done about it then. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely some kind of uh, veil that goes up on online gaming and there is no sense of that high score because just like y'all are trying to do um, with your GP, it's trying to make it as non-farmable as like i gotta play this game the right way to get it i've got to get that high score this is the only way that i can do it instead of having a bot on your computer while you're sleeping building it up because there's plenty yeah. of games that are like that you know what i mean yeah uh, i think it's i think a lot of games it's not only about skill and maybe creating a bot even it's it's about paying and winning you know and I, I think that's the biggest issue i think it's not even we have seen so many games right now that are just exploits of money you know and uh, exploits of uh hacking skill of creating a bot is one thing you know yeah. you're putting time in and it just basically what you're doing i see it as a developer i see it as um as a way of testing the developer out, you know, you're 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 just creating a ways for them to try to understand, like, okay, I want to, you know, what, how can I beat the hacker at this point or somebody who's explaining that? But I think when you are just pay, buying your way through the game, I think it just loses the purpose. No, no, I completely agree with that. I mean, you shouldn't be able to buy your way to the top. Um, yeah. There's there's too many instances of it. And a lot of time, the leaderboards are construed because these are either people that are developers themselves in the game, or they've got a crew that's like, hey, you got to be number one to make sure nobody else gets it. And uh, those are the things that go on behind the scenes, people. Like, that's, they're trying to milk you for money, and they will do everything they can to do it. Now, if a game's good enough, it doesn't have to try to be something it's not. It just exists, and that's good enough. I mean, I remember when Halo dropped. Everybody was like, oh, it's going to be all right. And then there was this crazy, immersive, you know, world, the Flood, Halo itself, the Covenant. I mean, it had this rich backstory and it drew you in. And that was its survivability for many years. Um, Call of Duty had something like that similar, but I feel like that's kind of been watered down with time. Um, you know, there are plenty of Halo spinoffs, but there is way more Call of Duty spinoffs, especially when you have two different camps building a Call of Duty game, uh, Black Ops and then, you know, Modern Warfare. So, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with it because then you have things that you got to deal with in our in, um, first person shooters like aimbots and this and that. And it's yeah, it, it's a trip. Yeah, it is like uh, I, I play a lot of see us go not anymore but i think we we have some time i have we yeah. both have CSGO uh, 
<laughs> yeah, spend some time and see us going. Me and Nathan sometimes just, I think, take out our anger and <laughs> see us go. Yes. It's a, it, it's a pastime activity after a hard work day uh, for both of us. And, um, and, you know, you get mad when you, you, you get uh, in, if, even if you get in a team with somebody that's using like a name bot, you know, you're angry because it just screws up the uh, game totally. Yeah, that's not what it's about. Exactly. All right, we're going to kick this one up. We got 20 people on this track. 45 seconds. Good luck, everybody. 10 rush coins on the line. The next one is the grand prize. Then we're going to open up the floor for about 15 minutes to you guys. We're going to be able to, be able to deliver whatever message you want to the people, uh, what you guys got coming up, what you can expect in the following uh, you know, months. Because this, the end of 2020, is approaching rapidly. Thank God. Um, I think everybody's ready for a new year. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, it is. This this year has been uh, an uneventful one. one yes. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. I mean, over here in the states, uh, you know, everybody down here in the south, we're just trying to recover from the hurricane that we got hit. And up north, uh, there's just utter chaos going on in the streets. Um, these kids yeah. need to be home playing video games, not out in the streets causing a, a ruckus. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's how video games can save the world. Yeah, go out in GTA 5, do the same thing. But in the, <laughs> we're, we're, it's essentially the same thing at this point. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. man. And I mean, the whole COVID thing, that's uh, uh, like my daughter, yeah. she goes to school uh, in the town over. They just actually completely uh, sent home the entire football team, the coaches and everything, because one of the coaches come back positive. Um, wow. Yeah, and I mean, I'm really interested to see what this flu season is going to be like because once things get cold, I don't know what that's going to do. Or we're going to get past election and it's just going to magically disappear. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that would be scary. Like, that would be, like, insane. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't doubt it at this point. I mean it's all this just madness that's going on and the reality of it is is that people just need to learn to love again and i i hate straighters like sounding up like a hippie but that's the truth the thing is is like you know we had people like martin luther king he didn't go out there and try to fight people he went out there and loved his you know aggressors he says you know you can hit me but all i'm gonna do is just turn the other cheek congratulations copper tequila on your 10 and I'd, I'd like to see more of that approach because if hate just keeps on getting answered with hate, that's all we're going to get. The cycle just keeps on going like this. So yeah, that, that's true. And uh, I think, I, of course, the situation in the U.S. is one thing, you know, for you, for you guys, it's we're, we're here in Europe, but we're here in Eastern Europe and uh, we're here next to our neighboring car countries, Belarus, Belarus, Belarus. So yeah. Uh, we we know we know how it is and uh, that you know you're you're maybe living in fear for uh, most of your lives and I, I have uh, friends uh, whose um, you know whose um, uh, I would say grandparents his grandparents are living there and you know I, I talk really often to him and ask how they how how things are there you know and it's really tough you know and, uh, and I think the the situation which you said hate versus hate it's it's happening all over the world. And, very much so. so that more mo more emotions and more understanding each other is needed mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's everybody thinks that there's some side there's not there's only one side and that's the human race and we're all a part of it <laughs> that that's what some people just fail to realize sometimes it's like uh we're all in the same boat and all you're doing is punching holes in it so we're sinking faster we're over here trying to stick our fingers in the holes so yeah. We'll see. Maybe we'll get it together one day. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll maybe it'll be the video games that bring it together. Who knows? Hopefully. Let's see. If the trend continues, we will have zombie raptors from Mars invading the Earth in just a few months. Can we not poke that bear? Let, let's not. 2020's already had enough surprises. Let's let's not have zombie Martians, too. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, let's wrap, uh, wrap it up and <laughs> let's proceed to the next no, year. No, let's let's save something for next year. So, <laughs> we'll it off the team. I shall accept our Raptor Overlords. 
<laughs> God. All right, guys, this is the final race. This one is for all the marbles, but I'm bum bum. And uh, the winner will get 10 rush coins and a copy of Fall Guys. So if this is the one you've been waiting on, it's time to get in it. I haven't played Fall Guys, by the way. Oh, oh good for you. Like, the salt, the, the salt. Oof. I hear there's just a tad bit of that salt in that game. Just a tad. Just a, <laughs> just a tad? Just a tad. For, you know, just the ocean. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. I like I have a bunch of people that are constantly like hounding me to play the game, but um, yeah, they they said the pretty much the same thing. There is a lot of rage that goes on in that game. Yeah. Salt can be real in it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Need more rush coins. Is this the Fall Guys? No, this is not the Fall Guys. They ain't falling. They're sitting. <laughs> well, I've seen it's done got dark in your windows over there. What time is it? About nine? Uh, no, I think it's around 11. Wow. Uh, half past 10. Half past 10. All right, well, we got, let's see. Yep, we've got 25 minutes left in the show. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have this final race and then we're going to open up the floor to you guys. If you guys in the chat have any questions for these gentlemen, this is the time to start throwing them out. All right? Yeah. Please do. We, we love to answer questions. Yeah. They like to put any of those uh, any of those questions to rest. Half past ten here, too. Oh. Y'all are probably close, then. All right, let's see. We got about 20 people out of the track. We're going to crank it up again. Now, remember, this is the final race. So if you want to win you a copy of Fall Guys and 10 Rush Coins, you got to get on the track in 45 seconds. Has the game going to have controller support if it, if it has cool? Come on, DG. I don't speak your language. Has the game... Is the game going to have controller support? Mm, uh, controller support for an RTS game, it it has been done. I've seen a couple of instances of it, but right now it is a very tough question to answer. But right now it would be a no for now. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember playing StarCraft 64. Um... Yeah, it's pretty clunky with a remote. You don't have that range that you can get with a mouse and keyboard, uh, especially with hotkeys and everything else like that. It's pretty crucial to have. Yeah, that was the point I wanted to touch on as well. Mm -hmm. Hot. So I noticed and, that, um, like, are you going to be able to build units eventually? So, like, you can actually set up units to where... Um, you know, like in StarCraft, you hit Control-1, Control-2, you can build, like, separate units and stuff like that, and then you can hit 1 to pick a unit and then 2 to pick a unit. Uh, yes, right now we have, um, although limited, but we have some key binding uh, of the sort. Uh, you can make groups uh, of your units, and, um, yeah, we're going to be exploring and adding more uh, uh, key binding and, and combinations of keys to sell the keys. Very cool. Yeah, because, I mean, that's that's something that I always had because uh, as your friend was a, a Zerg fanatic, I, I was as well. Um, and one thing I always liked having around the corner was like 20 Hydralisks. <laughs> because they're like, oh, it's just a Zergling rush. We're going to send out these units and then I'll bring them up behind them. Okay, I'm a uh, Protoss guy. Chris is Terran, so. Yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe we'll, oh. to, uh, yeah. maybe we'll have to have a little StarCraft game. Uh, I love Definitely warping. I just like warping stalkers everywhere and just <laughs> let's go. That's so annoying, man. I know exactly <laughs> the trick you're talking about. It's like, oh, son of a bitch. Like, why is there a cannon yeah. back here? <laughs> Harlock holding on to that lead. Kakio's not too far behind. I am Ian. I'm going to call you Ian. Oh. 
Oz, Kakios gets bumped up. Whoa. Oh, Harlock this... gets knocked off. Very close. Let's go. Now, Kakios is actually part of the Zenzo team, so if he wins, we're going to give it to the second place. And that looks like it might be Vlad the Impaler. Sorry, Kakios. It's really... It's... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and Mad Ed sneaks in, you trolley bastard. Look at you. Catch it first, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mad, you are the grand prize winner. You get yourself 10 rush coins, and I owe you a copy of Fall Guys. You don't have to send me any information. I already know where you're at, but you got to make sure you have a hash rush account. Congratulations, sir. Oh, he's like, holy shit. <laughs> 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 Fixed. Okay, do y'all say this at the end of every damn show? <laughs> rigged. <laughs> Fixed. Rigged. <laughs> it's rigged. It's all rigged. Well, that's it. That's it for all the races. All right, so we've got a few minutes left in the show. We've got about 20 more minutes. All right, guys, so I'm going to give the floor to you. What do you guys want to tell the world? What to expect? What do we have in the years to come from Hash Rush? Uh, uh, I, I'll start. Yeah. Okay. So I think, um, I think, I don't know, years or let's talk this year. I think let's start with that. Let's survive this year. And I think this year we want to, you know, start bringing out hero units. We want to make the game um, maybe more competitive in a way through leaderboard challenges mm -hmm. and um, I'll let Nathan maybe explain more about hero units and how they're going to interact with the game but I think a um, huge part is the blockchain integration as well uh, to get that you know that play turn model uh, finally in the game and allow players to uh, withdraw value from their time that they spend in hash rush. And um, I think we finally, hopefully next week, we're going to see Rush in the game. We're going to see the store in the game, so you'll be able to spend uh, your first Rush um, as well. And uh, then we're going to start working on the Rush pool. So allow players to sell uh, Rush coins to other players. And uh, adding an easily on-ramping solution for the new players who are maybe gamers first, not blockchain enthusiasts. So they can buy rush coins from other players, like uh, in a store against US dollars, and I think uh, that's going to be a huge, huge step forward to creating the Western in uh, yeah economy, and um, and hopefully next year we can see the P2P trading place. You know, early next year on that, and then next year the big step is uh, early access, finally with um, random planet generator. Uh, free at least free planet environments. Um, so what we want to see is forest planet, the one we already have. We want to see ice planet, uh, and we want to see uh, desert yeah. planet planet as well. And uh, all the um, uh, our items that you can get from the planets as well. So all the unique resources. But all that. Um, yes, in terms of new uh, gameplay features. Um... We want uh, hero units, which are basically, if you play the uh, Warcraft 3, you have your heroes, your Illidans, your uh, <clears throat> your your, your Arthuses. And um, hero units each will have their own set of abilities. Uh, a, a passive, a keybinding Q and E abilities. Mm -hmm. um, and each of them will have three item slots, a offensive, a defensive, and a support uh, item. These items will, some, some will be divided into tiers uh, that only specific units can, uh, specific heroes can use them. Mm -hmm. Like you won't be able, to, if you have a, basically a mage hero, you won't be able to put plate armor or a war hammer in its hands, but you will be all support items they will be a free for all. You can cut, you can choose whichever support item you want for your hero. Um, the intention is that each plant will have um, uh, up to three heroes, same as in classic R R RTSs. Mm -hmm. um, 
and um, yeah, the systems will come hand in hand with the crafting and the unique resource drops. So players will be able to switch planets uh, fairly often to get uh, the heroes and the gear that they want to craft. And when, as Chris said, when the marketplace goes up, uh, they'll be able to sell the items that they uh, craft themselves to other players and build that player-driven economy that we so, so want to happen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, and you were just saying that you're going to be introducing the Rush Coin next week? Uh, yeah, we're um, we're looking into we we're testing out the hash rush wallet service. That's what we call that's the system that basically provides the deposits and withdrawals and spend of rush in the game. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's basically a, a scalability solution. So we we're creating our own system where players won't need to have any cryptocurrency to use a rush token in the game. And, they'll be able to just use it uh, uh, free of charge. Uh, if they choose to take it out, they will uh, pay money for it. But uh, um, but yeah, so it's something that we are building up. We're testing it out right now uh, as we speak, to be honest. And um, uh, it is, we, we wanted to launch it in September. So the September is here and I think it's it's gonna probably hit next week. Uh, a few you need to know, uh, this is a really important piece of the puzzle uh, and the security and everything it's uh, as, as I, I think I mentioned in the earlier in the stream you know real money is involved and um, so it's really important the security and everything is uh, around that is really important for us so yeah first you know, and uh, foremost you got to be able to protect people like that's, you know, that's we're, we're exactly and uh, you know it's, it's gonna launch hopefully this yeah the upcoming week very nice. So, uh, let's see, Gigi was saying, how much color customization will there be? I want my units different colors. Uh, Y'all said something about having different skins, so I think that would probably answer that, wouldn't it? Yes, uh, we've got, with the intention is to have multiple skins, and the skin system that we're working on right now is that you have a basically a set, like if you, have, like imagine a, let's say a Dragon Slayer skin that has like Dragon Hide everywhere, and um, how we would divide it is you have a, a unique skin for each unit. It's not like a the same skin for every unit. Right. You would have a unique skin for your worker, for your uh, swordsman, for your raken lancers, for your tro uh, boulder trogs. So yeah, each of those units will have a would have a uh, unique uh, skin. So of course, like if you, yeah, if you collect all, there you go. Could, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that'll expand as time goes on. I mean, that would be yeah. cool having like my workers with the dragon skin armor on, and then you know having um, you know my regular like uh, rake and riders like have them as straight up knight you know setups and stuff like that. Yeah. So being able to mix and match and having your own kind of uh, little army, I think that'd be super cool. Yeah, and uh, we're uh, we're going even step further. We we are adding like um, as like customizable not only skins but um, like assets as well that can change like your sword sword or your uh your helmets and uh, yes. other things as well so you know you don't you, you it doesn't only change your um uh the color but it changes the visual uh concept in general so you can maybe uh, we already tested one out it was some asian uh, japanese like, yeah there were katanas and uh basically viking swords yes. yeah yes <laughs> That's that was like really cool. It, it, it made the units like yeah. look totally different than from the previous like environments. It, yeah, you know, but it's from skins. It's 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 all about you know for us the game visually. We want to keep it in this um, in this in this in this classic way that we made it when we when we first started. Mm -hmm. You know, and just throwing out different kind of skins isn't what we want to do. We know we know we want to keep that uniqueness to yes. the visual aspect as well. So uh, we're gonna be really uh, careful with that, is, of course. Cool. Yeah. Well, with that being said, guys, pretty much coming up to the end of the show. So if there's anything you guys want to throw out to your community, the floor is yours. Um, yeah, would I? I don't. I think I just thank you guys <laughs> for uh, for being around from uh, 2017, and and those who have come up with uh, in the beta, uh, we have seen a lot of new players. Uh, 
more than 2,500 players have joined the uh, community and uh, have played the game and have tested it out. And I just wanted to say thanks for believing us and thanks for believing the project. And um, hopefully in the uh, next few years, you know, we can uh, we can speak about like hash rush being as a standard of some kind of like games and how yes. how games should be built. And, and uh, I hope I hope that's that's yeah that's our goal. You know, we're not here to get money from uh, players. We're here to share value with players, and uh, we hope that's gonna become the standard. Well said. Yeah. Thank you everybody for um, joining the Hashrush beta and rooting for us uh, throughout all this way. Uh, 2020 has been, uh, let's not say rude words, but uh, it has been <laughs> a challenging year. And uh, to see so many of you joining the game and, and, and uh, giving your time to us and to, to this project uh, means, means a whole lot to me, me and Chris uh, and, and the rest of the team. Um, yeah, and, and, and tell your friends uh, about Hashrush and, uh, let's get this, uh, That's right. tell your friends to download Hashrush and then tell their friends and then tell their friends, come on, it's free. Yeah. It's not like they're asking for $50 a pop, which they very <laughs> easily could. I mean, I've seen less games that sell for more. <laughs> so please <laughs> tell your friends, get the word out there guys. Um, well, Nate, Chris, it's been a pleasure. I'll be talking to you guys here soon after the show. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the flip side, huh? Thanks, man. Thank you. Great to have you guys. Thanks, Zenzo. All right, bud. Peace. Thank you. Guys, what do you think? That was the Hash Rush click. I mean, what a show. What a show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the checkpoint level nine has come to a close. I like to thank everybody for coming and hanging out. Thank you so much for Hash Rush to come out and explain everything that you know the Hash Rush coins to be able to give away. I've been your host Tindo, and this has been brought to you by Zenzo Gaming Ecosystem. If you have any questions about Hash Rush, be sure to go hit up their Telegram and their Discord. If you have any questions for us over at Zenzo, come join our Discord. We'll help you in any way we can, and uh, we'll be talking. We'll be reaching out to all the winners very soon, and everybody. Thanks so much for coming out. Until next time, peace.